What do you know? Whoa. So, hello, hello, hello. I'm host Eric, and I'm here to say we're back. We're back from the open mic, and I pulled a real boneheaded maneuver. I had the camera all set up, ready to go and record us. Uh, and then when we was our turn to get up there, I just forgot to start the video and I didn't record us. So sometimes when life gives you oranges, you fail to make orange juice. That was w what happened today. But we had a delightful time. What a wonderful open mic. What a wonderful community. Which is why I have titled this dream, actually. How do, how do you like where you live? Is it a cool place? Are there cool things that you particularly like about it? One thing I particularly like about Mariposa is this fantastic live stream, you know? I mean, fantastic open mic. And I will tell you, when we walked in there, the lady approached us, told us how much she loved Gregory in disguise. And then, actually, when I went to get my food, the food truck outside, yeah, the food truck said, are you the Gregory guy? I'm like, yeah. And he said, oh, that's my daughter's new favorite song. We found it on YouTube. I was like, wait, did you say we found it on YouTube? He's like, yeah. I'm like, wow, thank you very much. That's very nice of you. Um, because, of course, we didn't say anything about being on YouTube last time or this time. We weren't trying to pimp the YouTube channel at all. No. So, uh, this person had to, like the song left to just sort of, maybe it's on YouTube, you know? And uh, I guess found our video of it and everything. How amazing is that? It, people, like, they definitely remembered us. Yeah, and they did. They had nice things to say to us and stuff. I would say, tonight's performance went a little less uh popping because you know we didn't have songs memorized and uh we we did okay we we did fine uh you know it, i was pleased with our performance it uh obviously the energy is a little different when you have it memorized than when you're reading it from a paper you know hi charlie art stuff what's up bestie Said earlier stuff. Not a mucho. You are a old ass. I think you mean you are an, an old ass. The way that works uh, in Zad is if the word following the indefinite article begins with a vowel, you want to use an. If it begins with a consonant, you want to use a. We played What's Wrong with the Ladies. We played Jesus People. And we played... Uh, Wonderful, wonderful kitty. Smoking hella ass chips. It's your girl, Kai. It's my girl, Kai. What's going on, Kai? Uh, Jason L., I will tell you this. Uh, obviously, Skibbity Bomba Clouds are stinky. But uh, my point is, ain't no Skibbity Bomba Clouds come around here. Because I'm the Rizzler. And my gat makes them be all like, damn, and just bail, you know, because I'm busy smashing in the Rari. I just turned 14, want to chat. <laughs> I mean, I live stream all the time. We have people of all various ages joining the chat. If you feel like chatting here, that's fine. Note that it's not always age appropriate, but I make every effort to prevent it from being unsafe or predatory in any way. <laughs> Comments like that make it seem otherwise, perhaps. I know your granddaddy was racist. Uh, I never met either of my biological grandfathers, actually. Police are on the way, sicko. <laughs> okay, good. Glad I'll uh, let them know while they're here that... Um, that we're live streamers. Sometimes, you know, spiteful people from the world might want to swat us or something. You're always welcome to come in and look around. You know, we're not up to anything bad. 
So I'm going to go ahead and hide you uh, because you're defaming me. Uh, that's not what I said, you defamer. Talk about ignoring exactly what I said. Try to set this kind of like trap or whatever. I'm 14, my chat is like, wow. Oh. You know, I live stream like this all the time. People are welcome to come in here. I try to keep it a, a safe and non-predatory environment, but it's not always age appropriate. So just keep that in mind. And the response was, this sicko wants to chat with kids. <laughs> it's like, when you ask a question, actually listen to what I say and check to see if what you're going to say afterwards still makes sense, you know? A musician, yeah, uh, what's my genre? I don't know. My instrument, I mostly play guitar. I have a bass as well. Casso banned the guy, the guy that just said. Casso banned the guy? I mean, you mean the not nice swing set? I banned them, yeah, because they defamed me with with lies. So obviously I'm not going to let that kind of defamation continue, you know, go on without without banning the person. Jonathan Carper, Carpenter, it is going quite well. If you want to uh one zenith have some sort of <coughs> sense of what I'm, what we do. <coughs> I'll put a link something. <coughs> um, this one is the one that people are quite. I mean, we have we have a lot of good songs, but this is the one that people seem to. Uh, <clears throat> uh, people seem to be immediately responsive to like a lot this is the one that people talked to us about this week that we'd played uh, last time it's called Gregory in Disguise it's got a good video too I'm happy with the video oh, You can check that out if you want. Uh, I'm not especially good at producing. I like to think I'm a good songwriter and a pretty good singer, a good guitar player, but I'm not good at producing music. I'm going to get Dr. Dre for you. Oh, thanks, Rachel. I appreciate that. Jeez Louise, you smoke every day? Oh, that's right. The higher. I had already resolved that I wasn't going to entertain your comments on that by reading them out loud. My dude, the last time you smashed was my grandma back when you was smoking a doobie at Woodstock. I was not alive during Woodstock. And this is my wife, my 39-year-old wife. So, uh, you know, I smash ra rather regularly. Actually, Paul Velez. I don't know, say yesterday. You do smoke every day, Eric. Yo, guys, who let this kid cook? Uh, I'm not what, sure what you're talking about there. Me neither. CR7 Goat, you're talking about me? I appreciate you calling me a kid. I am that. Who let me cook? I don't need permission from anyone to cook. Howdy, partner. Ha uh, ha hi, Jeremy Nash. Ha 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 hi. Uh, so, yeah. Even though I'm 52, Paul Velez, believe it or not, my dick works just as well as ever. Maybe even better. Maybe better than ever. I like to think so. Yeah. You're stronger than I remember, too. Mm -hmm. I'm on my third wife. And I feel comfortable, confident saying I hump better on my third wife than I did on my first. 
Uh, anywho, what was I about to do? Right, I need to make myself some more coffee. I'm excited to have some coffee. JC from Indiana, it's good to talk to you again. Welcome back from Indiana. Yes, this question was asked earlier, and uh, whoever answered the first 10 amendments won that, that answer. The answer I gave was um, things government can't do. Don't forget your daily French lesson. Baguette, beret, apple tower, quelle est la plage? There, I'm done. The winning answer is definitely the first 10 amendments. My, my answer was not terrible, but not nearly as good as the winning answer. I'm speaking Creole. Uh, you mean like jambalaya, crawdads, red beans and rice. Get you on down here, boy. Like that kind of grill. No, Sophia is sad again. Don't sex your wife. <laughs> and that moment, I really appreciate you providing your input on matters that obviously I don't need your input on. But I, you know, I, I appreciate the fact that you're willing to go out of your way to tell me things that uh, you want to say, regardless of whether you have any possible cause to say them. Jason out. <laughs> That's gross, but whatever. I'll let it go. Do I do any cardio at all? Uh, you know. Chet Banligay said what? That's not bannable. Why so bright? I'm not sure what you mean. Why is the lighting so bright? Why am I so bright? Tucker Bean, hello, how are you? Won't you tell me your name? Ryback fan says, well, it's good. The kiss says, suck off. Uh, no, thank you. Oh, maybe Inzad was summoning up the Bill of Rights. Don't sex your wife. <laughs> Maybe he was. Maybe he was somebody up the Bill of Rights. That's a good point there, Keisha. I hadn't considered that. It is four words. So also could Tucker Bean be summoned at the Bill of Rights? That's a nice hat. Thank you, Tucker Bean. Unless you're talking about the Bill of Rights, in which case, I'm not sure that is a good way to sum up the Bill of Rights in four words. Hi, JC. Hi, JC. Thanks, Jason L. I'm glad it's not a Democrat state. What's not a Democrat state? I mean, California definitely is. Yeah, I don't. Is. I don't live in a Democrat part of California, but the state is definitely a blue yeah. state. You know? I liked how that guy was talking about COVID. Before. Yeah, there was a. Uh... <laughs> You're gonna get yourself timed out, there, JC. Yeah. Get away to get timed out. Do I have any stretchy arm powers? I don't think so. Is there a bill of wrongs? No, because rights are different than the opposite of wrongs. Jonathan Carpenter says, I'm doing better than when I talked to you before. Life is getting better for me. I slowed down on doing that stuff I told you about. Oh, well, that's good to hear. It's getting better all the time. For a little while, I thought that JC above you in the chat was you, but I figured out relatively... We could ask soonish enough that it was a different JC. I'm the fart snorter's favorite YouTuber. Well, you know, because I think we we might not be explicitly a fart snorting. Uh, channel, but I try to provide an environment that's accommodating people of all needs, including fart snorters. Why the torch? Are you a f being a fellow delinquent? I use the torch instead of a regular lighter because uh, 
Well, yeah. The one thing is I can see that I'm not very good at producing producing my own music. I, I'd like to believe I'm a good songwriter. I think I'm a decent enough singer. Rachel's a good enough singer. And we have the tools there to make some good music. But I'm not very good at producing my music. Or anyone else's music, obviously. But my own music is the only kind of music I, I've tried to produce. Um, would you do a show on Trolls Exposed? I mean, I try to do live streams specifically on trying to like encourage trolls to come in here and try their hand. Hey, let me live. You are live. You're live in the chat. I generally don't like to have other people in the conversation in the audio space except for Rachel. Why should I ban the guy who said fart? For God's sakes, CR7 goat. How much of a Karen could you possibly be? I actually uh, got offended when someone in the chat called me a Karen. I was like, oh, I'm a Karen? You're not a Karen at all. Well, thanks, one, one Zenith. Anyway, that's the thing that the people, the, the guy who worked at the food truck, I went to get my food, not thinking and I can't do anything except get my food, say thank you, you know. And he's like, are you the guy who, you, are you the Gregory guy? And I'm like, yeah. And he said, it's my daughter's new favorite song. We looked it up on YouTube. And I, I literally said, wait, did you just say you looked it up on YouTube? <laughs> and he's like, yeah. And I was like, wow, thank you. That's so nice of you. Because we never even talked about being on YouTube at the Dover Mike. We just played our couple of songs last week and went back home, you know. We didn't say we were on YouTube. So the fact that they went around to search for YouTube to see if maybe it was there, that's crazy. Yeah. And we walked in and the woman who's in charge of the open mic was like, Oh my gosh, me and Nick, the bartender, um, we had that song Gregory stuck in our heads, like, the yeah. whole, whole week. We had multiple people talk to, talk to us about it. How crazy is that? And we just played, we played there one time a month ago. The, the open mic's only once a month. But it's so, such a wonderful, warm, welcoming open yeah. mic. Everyone's, they, when they're, when people are playing, everyone's paying attention and listening. Um, I, you know, it's it's great. It's just such a great community we live in. We got a good response after uh, ladies too. Did we? Mm hmm That first like that first table of like that guy who's on uh not before us but before before us who had good guitar skills. Yeah, the one who I like to feel. Yeah, he was going like crazy, and um, the guy who went second. Who had like stage presence last time? You said uh -huh. he was like like hooting, hollering at us too. Well, that's great. Yeah. Is CR seven goat really spamming? Oh, you know, I did say the same thing twice, but it was a phrased a little differently. Yeah, it was fun. Um, Hi, Capillo. I notice. I, I mean, how do you expect me to respond to you? Yo, ban everyone. No, I'm not going to ban everyone. I don't want to ban even anyone. You weren't wrong because obviously you weren't because CR7 acknowledged that that's what he was doing to get me to notice. I read your thing. I just didn't think it was worth reading out loud. Sure are a lot of Death to Whitey live streams on YouTube tonight. Oh, is that what we're doing? Death to Whitey? Cool. Those darn white people and their darn white people ways, I am done with it. <laughs> um, do I like to go fishing? I do go fishing periodically. Uh, I fish in... I've gone fishing at Fast Lake. I've gone fishing at 
Bagby Recreation Area, and I've gone fishing at near Lake McClure. Yeah, we just got we just got done um, at an open mic here in town. I would like to perform live more. Uh, perform live, we I or and or we perform live on the stream all the time, you know. Yeah. And. You know, I, I'd like to think that we have performances on stream that definitely are a, a level up from what we did at the open mic because, you know, it's a, it's a, one of those environments where like, I didn't really like the sound of my guitar tonight. I didn't like the tone of it. It sounded different plugged into the board than it does plugged into my amp. I had it set up for my little amp, you know. So I tend to be a little bit um, nitpicky about actual live performances. I don't want to busk. I, I don't know if it's legal or not, but I, I, I'm not interested in doing that. You know, after all, I can get much, I can get many more people watching me play live songs here on the live stream than I can in the street if I wanted to, to do that. No, I, I was pulled a super boneheaded maneuver, big dog mofo. I got the camera all set up, pointed in the right place um, during the last song of the guy before us. And then my phone was kind of low on electricity, so I, I shut it off and uh, and I just waited for that song to end. I was going to turn it back on and start the recording as soon as we went up there. And then I forgot to start it. And I didn't record it. Like a big dummy. All right, you, you have a good night, Jonathan Carpenters. Go to sleep and I go to work in the morning and have a wonderful time. Uh, the thing is, I'm also sort of comparing against how much I know we could hit or I have hit, et cetera, before. Like, when my energy's right, and so this is a little harder to pull off with two people than it is with one, but um, when the energy's right for me, when my energy's right, and I'm feeling it, and I'm not having any kind of tech difficulties, like levels issues or whatever. Uh, you know, an open mic is not like you can really have a sound check. So uh, that I have before can and again, you know, when I'm really like in the zone, I can successfully blow the audience away. I used to play open mics and other things. I played in bands as well, you know, but uh, I always found that my most successful performances were at open mics because well, I mean, I guess I used to play with more energy, more uh, put on more of a performance, but I have faith in my ability to make a big impact in a live performance. I don't feel like we've done it yet. I, like mm -hmm. when you, when we really kill it, it's clear, you know? I didn't time you out. Did, oh, yeah, I did time you out. Did I time you out? I don't. Oh, right. Because you made. It doesn't matter if you're kidding. You don't need to sexualize my wife like that. It's disrespectful. I don't normally care about respect, right? It's like everyone's like, oh, you better be respectful. I don't normally care about it, but, you know, certain things is just like, okay. You don't need to talk to my wife like that. Because, after all, she is my wife. I am looking at the chat. I'm looking at it right now. 
What do you want me to say? Well, I'm going to guess your name is Kylo, assuming you can't see my comments. So have a good day, Kylo, and have a good one, dude. Right back, fan? I can see your comments just fine. You want me to respond immediately to what you're saying, but I was in the middle of responding to something. I was in the middle of saying something else. You know, I was responding to Big Dog Mofo's Was It Recorded? Yes, I remember you from the stream earlier, Ryback fan. Ryback fan. And my name is Eric, not Kylo. Uh, I do go back up and get to things in the chat when I get them, get to them, you know? It's just sometimes I, uh, Oh, you don't got to worry about me giving a personal information. I'm not very secrety. We played at the Grove here in Mariposa tonight, and that's where we'll play next month as well. You can see me, you can see me and or Rachel, usually me, play live on the stream practically every single day. At some point, I will bust out the guitar and play three, four songs. You know, majority of the time I'm talking, but um, at least at some point every live I'll play a few songs. If you're curious i'd be happy to play one now you know i gotta go get, just get the uh um just get the guitar of the car all right you didn't annoy me i was just saying give me a second you know it's like i don't want to ignore anybody i don't want to be correctly accused of ignoring people in the chat so yeah i you know i guess i got a little defensive about it because uh I, it does sometimes take me a little time to get around to everything. You go live with Ruben, that would bring numbers. Why would Ruben bring numbers? I don't feel any pressure. I, I would love for the success of this stream to correlate somehow or cause or link to in some way or another. Me being successful with music you know if, if I could choose anything to be successful at it would be music who wouldn't want to be like professionally recorded promoted by a record label having set up a, a performance tour etc manage your social media accounts etc who wouldn't want that I would love that but <coughs> but uh as, as strongly as I identify with my identity as a songwriter, music creator, or whatever, I'm even more than that am I a talking live streamer. I could talk all day, I could talk all night, and when I'm done talking then, I could talk about right, and then when I'm done, I could talk some more, because I'm talkity 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 tower. I'm talkity tower, the talking whore. Just say, I will whore out my talking for free, not even whoring, I'm just a talking slut. to play the guitar and song on the stream so much is because I don't think uh, the recorded versions of my songs represent the songs as well as playing them live does because I don't think I'm very good at producing music and recording it, you know? CR7 go ha 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 I'm CR7 go <laughs> Jason now is gonna bounce. Alright, see you later, Jason now. Don't forget to plenty of cheese. My name's not Kylo, alright? My name is Lexington Smudger Pants. Quick song. <laughs> 
right now, right here, real quick. Gerald has a thought. Gerald has a lot. Gerald has a plot to get the margarines, tater tots. He's got a good idea for a name changing business. Thinking now about what to call Christmas when they hire his firm to change that name. Oh, Gerald always thought there'd be chance enough to return to the work a lot rough. He get back to it eventually. But his visions piled up and his plans would interrupt. Although work that started off so hopefully. Now time's back on the business, thinking of changing back list to list list. So how all the people wish out his name. And Gerald knows he understands ever more clearly now. He won't provide explanation regarding the why or the how. He'll see you and know you from inside your heart. Exciting, delighting, Gerald plays his part. But Gerald still knew that too much to do. And he had dropped time in the underview. Too much to be but. So where now and what? But too much time for me picking the skill. And with you. Now Gerald has a pot. Gerald has a lot. Gerald has a pot to get the margarine tater tots. He's got a good idea for an ain't changing business. Thinking now about what's called Christmas. When they hire his firm to change that name. Now Gerald has a thought. <clears throat> the guitar is out of tune, but other than that, play it fine. I'm not gonna play more songs, but I am gonna tune the guitar. There, students now. And the next time I play a song, it won't be out of tune. I don't like harsher rules. No, not at all. Okay. I, um, you and I work better as a performing thing than me by myself, ultimately, for a lot of reasons. But what we're going to ultimately probably need to do is Get the right mix of of stuff going yeah. on. Like, yeah. you know. Um, tonight we had all of the songs were songs in which you were the lead singer. Yeah. Which is not is not a bad thing for you to be the lead singer on songs. I want to integrate you as much in songs as I can. But there's also there needs to be some songs in there where I'm the lead singer. Because some of them are more, uh, like for example, Agave Weatherman, I have to do it because the vocals and the, the guitar have to be exactly on point throughout mm. the whole thing. And it's something that is only going to happen if I'm doing both of them, you know? Yeah. And there's certain vibes for certain songs like that that require, they're, they're best served by me doing the main part, you doing the background vocal. So there's plenty of songs I want you to do. Uh, I want you to do background vocals on, you know. Yeah. Can you play World Cup by I Show Speed? I was in Speed's video. High huge direction. Um, I only stream on YouTube. Thanks, Jaron. Uh, my PFP was Haha. -ha. 
I don't know what your PFP stands for. Uh, Taco Bell, man. Hi, it's Amanda. I just changed my name. Hi, Amanda. So, are you saying so? How did it go? It went well. I mean, it went great. We, uh, it's a work in progress, you know? Well, thanks, one Zenith. Bro, could you hit a jig? I don't know what hitting a jig means exactly. Do you mean like the song that, a kind of song that causes you to dance a jig? Like, like some kind of Irish song? Like, is that, is that what it is? That is. Uh, thank you. Yeah, I was, I feel the rhythm on that one and other ones as well. Uh, recently tonight we did this one song that's perfect for a duet called What's the Matter with Chad or possibly called What's Wrong with the Ladies. Anyway, because it's got alternating lyric things. So first she says line, then I do a line, then she says line, then I do a line. And uh, it's made to be like that because kind of like the lines overlap a little bit. And um, and I think that went quite well. I was quite pleased with it. But it was also it's also complicated. It's hard to nail exactly right. And we had these small printouts of the mm -hmm. lyrics. Yeah. So, <laughs> so I like, literally couldn't read what I was singing at one point like I was like what <laughs> the thing is of course Rachel you didn't necessarily need the the stand you could have just held the paper in your hand if you wanted to mm. but uh I need a stand because obviously I'm playing the guitar well, whatever <laughs> but regardless um so that's what I mean by our work in progress it went really well I was really pleased with the with the way it went down the second song I played Jesus people the songwriter, this is this guy who plays there also who's got excellent feel for the guitar. I'm impressed with his guitar playing a lot. I'm not in love with his his the style of his songs and stuff. His songwriting is a little bit like oh like over serious, mm -hmm. you know? But um but I was impressed with his the feel that he has for the guitar is just amazing. It's like He's a great guitar player, just playing basically rhythm guitar too, not not doing anything all like nudie. But uh he he was he had something to say like after the, the second song, he's like, Wow, it's got a great melody, you guys that's great. We're going to the Jesus People song, which was very gratifying to hear. You know, the people there are both nice. They're nice, but they're not they're not, they're not giving compliments they don't mean. You yeah, know? like, after we played What's the Matter with Chad, I, the same, like, guy, I think. There's um, people in the front. Yeah, yeah, the people in the front were, like, going nuts. It was really nice. Yeah. So, uh, so anyway, just because I'm not super enthusiastic about my talking about how the fourth went, it's because I see it as a work in progress. It's not because I'm disappointed in it. Okay, good. It's just like, I I know that we're gonna, we'll be a lot better at some point. Oh yeah. We'll be a lot better than we were tonight at some point. Yeah. And so, I, uh, my, I'm not, I'm not unhappy with how things went at all. I recognize that this as that, we're in that step of things, you know? And I think it's great. I love the fact that we're stepping forward through this process. That's good. So we scheduled Lou house sitting for ourselves and we will be at your house, I believe on The concert is Tuesday. Monday? No, Monday. We have well, hotel in Bend on Monday and Tuesday. So Sunday? We're going to do Saturday night at um, J 
Jack London. Sunday Night Blues. Monday Night Bend. Tuesday Night and Bend. And leave on Wednesday. Yeah. So that's our plan, Lou. We'll be there on a Sunday, okay? And like, we're not putting you out or anything, right? Because I just want to make sure that... She invited us. We, oh, okay. I accepted oh, it, oh. so that's all there is to it. She feels put out now. It's too bad. She already invited us. <laughs> um. So it'll be a Sunday night. Sunday, the Mia of May. What's the day of the concert? The 14th. So it's Sunday, the 12th of May. Sunday, the 12th of May. I'm excited too. Uh, so, maybe where we are right now in the overall meow meow. Monica saying, Good morning. I am well. You're from India. How do you like living in India? Do you find where you live to be a wonderful place? A meow place? A little bit of this, a little bit of that place? Give us your thoughts in keeping with the title. I will hit this right now and then pass it to you, Jason. Hold on. I need a beverage. Oh, I got my coffee. Where did I put it? I left it outside. Like a big, big dummy. All right, once again, have a great evening. Thanks for stopping by. <coughs> you know what I say. Everybody come and go as you please. I don't have any expectations. My basic message is, everybody come and go as you please. Like and subscribe as you please or not, as you see fit. I'm not going to ask you to do so. And you know better than I whether you should. And uh, I don't have any expectations. I have expectations for these bad boys, though. And the expectation is that they're going to sprout. I'm sure they will. They haven't yet. It's in a couple of days, but let's give it at least a week or so, you know. Those are actually, uh, Those are actually five different strains in the six C starters. So I have two Northern Lights, one Jack Herrera, one Gorilla Glue number four, one Cherry Pie, and one Super Skunk. If you know your strains, you might say, that's pretty sativa here, heavy, Eric, isn't it? These days, I like sativas better. I don't know what to say. I just, I prefer sativas. And Jack Herrera is my favorite strain of all. Probably should have planted two Jacks. However, Jack is also super slow budding. It takes forever to finish budding, you know. So it's not for an impatient, an impatient man. So that might have something to do with why I decided to. Uh, why I decided to plant two Northern Lights instead of two Jacks? Because I got a total of twenty six seeds. But I don't want to plant, I don't want to ever have more than six plants going at once. That's, that's as much plant maintenance as I want to deal with. Plus, more than that, you start attracting attention potentially you don't want, maybe from county people or whatever, right? <coughs> I got a jiggy hat, my boy. Is that what this is, a jiggy hat? Is that what this is called? Yeah, this is Rachel on the couch. Yep. (sighs) 
ban the guy that just said, yeah, no CR7 goat. I'm not going to ban the person who just said, yeah, all right? Don't be a skibbity bomba clap. Sean Ranklin. I'm in California. And I'm not sure if you're aware of this, Jason Hesser, but California knows how to party. Oh, God. The one billionth time I've heard that, Super King, meow, meow, meow. Ah, Salam. Namaste. Greetings, salutations, buenos dias, etc. You live near death, you lived there for three years, you, maybe in or near Death Valley National Park? Well, we live in near, not in, uh, Yosemite National Park. So we are National Park Brothers. We California National Park Brothers. Sean Ranklin, he's my dude, but you can kiss him on the cheek. Yeah. Just you, you can get one of these from me, Sean. Mwah! That's great. That's really nice. <laughs> um, so anyway, Jason, uh, we live right between the Sierra National Forest and the Yosemite National Park, uh, right near the Jersey, Day, Jersey Dale Ranger Station. Yeah, very close to fish camp. Very close to fish camp. We live in Jersey Dale. Back here, uh, uh, like Heights Cove. Um, Celestial Bliss, do not drink bleach, okay? That is not for drinking. Just because it's a liquid doesn't mean you can drink it. <laughs> All Ryan Hand makes a good point. Damn, Super King Anthony, that's Mike Hunt's favorite joke. Why is there a Prego Man emoji? Um, I don't know. I like the thickness of those blinds. Yeah, these aren't blinds. These are shutters. These are called plantation shutters. They're great. Uh, they help with insulation. They help with sound insulation. You can deal with them like this. You can you know, open it up like that. Pretty cool, huh? I like these shutters. Mac T. She's my wife. It's generally considered, perhaps in poor taste, to attempt to seduce a man's wife while he's sitting right next to her. Yeah. Uh... I'm Turkish. You're Turkish, you mean? <laughs> Welcome, Turkish person from Turkey. Sean Ranklin says, laughing but crying. Happy pay says, slay. I don't really want to slay any puss except for the one I'm sitting right next to, okay? So, that's just how I roll. I don't know. Call me old fashioned. Call me prude. Call me push shy. Whatever you want to call me. Call me the Hierophant, but I'm gonna I'm gonna stay uh, faithful to my wife. Hi, how are you, says Smart Boy? I am well. Thank you for asking. How are you, Rachel? I am good. It tastes so good. Jason Hester says, "Cat, we have two cats: Trouble and Capio." Yep. Satan is scared by cats. We may reach 13,000 during this live stream. If so, it might call for the thug shake. <laughs> Bomba clat. Skibbity. You got those words wrong. <laughs> Baby No Money um, put this thing out on Instagram and it's him out of the computer and all it says in bold red letters is yeah. <laughs> really? Yeah. <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> yeah. Um, you're a cat guy? Well, we have two cats. Uh, we have no fish tank. We just have two cats, and that's all the animals we have, and that's all the animals we want. 
I already banned the solar system CR7 goat. That's why from now on it's just moon, earth, sun. The rest of the solar system, get out of here. Get out of here, Baldy. Get out of here, Baldy. <laughs> How spectacular is that Bible story? The one with Baldy? Yeah. Um, spectacular? It's so appropriate. It's so crazy, too. Like, the story is some boys jeer Elijah. In the following fashion, get out of here, Baldy. Get out of here, Baldy. And he brings a curse of the Lord down on them, calling two bears from the mountains. And the bears maul 42 of these boys. That's crazy. That's a crazy story. Yeah, that's a crazy story. Like, you ever come to Los Angeles? Yeah, I go to Los Angeles periodically. See my daughter. Around the water. Why do you live in Los Angeles, JC? My daughter live in Los Angeles. Do I got go there on the air? The Lord only brings blessings. <clears throat> no curses, huh? Well, tell it to Kings 2, 23 through 25, okay? The story of Elijah. Because in that story, Elijah calls down the curse of the Lord and causes a bear to maul 42 boys for jeering him with the words, get out of here, Baldy, get out of here, Baldy. <laughs> I look poppy? I look poopy. Oh, well, that may be the case, case Jonathan Sutton, that I look poopy. Uh, if so, well, that's just how I naturally look. Nothing I can do about it. So if it's too much of an offense to your eyes, I'd just say, like, it doesn't get any better than this. You know, this is as good as I ever look, really. Yeah, bong rips for sure, Blizzard. For shizzo, my nizzo. I do know the actress Tara Reeve, Winston's mom. Um, yeah, she got a botched like breast job, and uh, horrible. Makes me don't need to talk about. It. If you feel, I'm sorry. If you feel si squeamish. She also looked like one of these girls. Um like a mean girl in high school and I was always like she's so lucky to like look like Tara Reed at that time when Tara Reed was at her like high point like added to her popularity of course Tara Reed's no rock scientist <laughs> Kitty Cam? I don't know where Kitty is. Oh, there's Kitty. I see what everyone keeps talking about Kitty. I don't even know what we were talking about. I hear blends in with Theo's fur. <coughs> Hi, South Africa. The cat's name is Capio. K A P I O Capio. That's terrible, Isaiah Rude. I never. I don't like driving, having to drive like an insane person because of other people driving poorly. Fe doesn't like other people behind it. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm not taking fat dabs. I'm just pulling bar rips of regular weed, but uh, because last time I took a big bar rip with some. Concentrate on it. it made me cough so much that I'm just like, I'm not gonna do that for a while. Yeah, that's my wife. 
That's my sexy wife. She is 39. I know she looks somewhat younger than that. And I'm 52. I know that I look somewhat older than that, but so it goes. You know, people want to object or whatever, complain, say shit or whatever. You know what I say to that? I'm just like, anybody I want to, meow, meow, well, I just gotta say, meow, meow. I'm not saying you're saying meow, 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 blaze it. I'm not saying that. I'm just saying. Can the cat do the thug shaker? No. She doesn't like to be jostled around. You know. Oh, yeah, I know. I will. I, I am. I have been for my entire life. Thank you, Blaze of 505. I do do me because I don't know how to do anybody else. Le Chat says, I am the cat. You are the cat. You are the strip club. Your cat, their picture kind of looks like my cat. I just want to go look at it more closely, actually. Let's see. Oh, yeah, you look a lot like Capio. Not exactly the same, but a lot like Capio. Wow. Let's take a look at Capio. Oh, let me move this thing. After we do that, we'll look at... The picture, the circle there, and you can compare for yourself and see what I'm talking about. I think you'll find that two cats actually look quite a bit alike. There's Capio, right? And then, now check out this. See? Pretty similar, huh? You are the cat, Le Chat. Pretty cool, huh? Can I do the thug shaker? When you meet a thug and he won't listen to you, go up to him then and show him how you do do. You say, listen here thug, you gotta shake, shake, shake. Listen here thug, you gotta do the shake, shake, do the thug, got the thug, a thug, a thug, a thug, a shake. Like that, okay? That's the full version of the thug shake. Oh, I've got a booty. Get, motherfuckers. Get. Don't tell me I got no booty. I'm nothing but booty. I love nursery rhyme. TF. Um, not quite sure how to respond to that. I respond to TF or WTF. I prefer TF over WTF. It's got kind of more of a, a sassy... A sassy flair to it. Just cause you skibbity bomb a class. Just cause you can't handle my risen gap. There's no reason to be all hurt or whatever, okay? Just because you skipped the bumble class can't handle my risen gut doesn't mean you should be all butter. Let's go outside and have a cigarette. Where are my glasses? Oh, should put keep them in my. You gotta keep it in your meow. I do have still in my meow. I did keep it in my mouth, so I don't need to critique myself. The biggest lie the devil ever told was convincing the string he was leaving at 11.30. <laughs> That's excellent. Now that I see the whole context. Ruben, you're doing fine work. It may not always earn me a wonder point, but there's this elegance there. It may not be as flashy as some of your other things. And they're thereby less likely to earn one point. But I want you to know, there's a level of respect sometimes that goes beyond one point. It's attained only by the mechanism of real aesthetic grace 
And that's the metric upon which you've attained here tonight. Bravo, sir. Bravo. You can come outside now, Capio, if you want. You want me to come help you? Capio tries to avoid trouble so much. Come on, P. Come on, P.O. Oh, kitty, kitty, meow, meow, pantses. Come on, Capio. Come here, kitty. I would like go in and get her and carry her outside, but I, I, can, I just know that when she sees me approach her, like I'm gonna, she can just read my body language. She'll run away because she doesn't know why I'm coming to pick her up. Well, come outside, sweetie. He's gone. He's gone, and I'm policing. Poor kitty's scared of trouble all the time. No, nah, hell, it's extra hot right now. What's going on here? Go Bulls. Hey, it's Mike. Baba Booey indeed. That is all. What's going on here? Currently, there are, I guess, I don't know, seven or eight different things going on here at the same time. How, do you, how would you like me to prioritize them and listing them? By significance, alphabetically, Am I famous? No, I'm not famous. Are you famous? Jay Davis, are you, are you famous? Are you that, are you the Jay Davis? I am famous? I am pretty sure I'm not famous, but, um, I wish I were. Oh, you are famous, good, I'm glad. You, you definitely are a famous person now that you've talked to me, because this is talking with famous people. Ergo, yeah. You're the J. Davis. That's what I thought. Famous for nothing specifically, even just famous because he's J. Davis. Thank you, Rachel. The top says, I'm a musician. Cool. What do you play? You stink nasty, huh? Yeah, everybody here is a famous person. That doesn't necessarily mean they're a celebrity, though. Ciao, Bella. Hello, Bella. How are you, Bella? Thanks, Jay Davis. We love you, too. You also have a beautiful day, even though it's night. We well, play drums. Well, you're in high demand, aren't you, the, the top? Are you good at playing drums? Do you live near me? If the answer to the first question is no, then you don't need to answer the second question. <laughs> I'm doing, uh, doing quite well, quite well. CRA. Yo, Greenville, North Carolina. About as far away from me as you could possibly get in America. You're on the whole other side of it. I'm in California. <coughs> Yo, CBA. How's it going? I don't know anybody famous, except for all the famous people here who qualify as famous people by virtue of talking to me on talking with famous people. Besides that, I don't know any famous people. Oh, I feel like I might have a poop in me, everybody. And that would be very gratifying. It's always good to, if you have poop in you, to get it out of your body. Because, of course, uh, it makes you feel, you know. Incomplete as a human being to be filled with poop. I gotta plug my phone in, it's running out of electricity.
Cause my phone just don't have that much electricity in me. I guess I didn't plug it in earlier when I should have. I'm gonna put this in the hole. Piggity, 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 piggity. There. Now we have electricity. They're entering directly into the phone. Thanks, Winston's mom. So far, nobody's really offered their thoughts on it. I don't think. Oh, yeah. As Avery mentioned about driving. Well, that's why people are telling me where they're living. <laughs> uh, Richmond, Virginia. How do you like Richmond, Virginia, Shiraz Khan? My aunt lives in Richard, Virginia, Richmond, Virginia. Do you think it's a good place? I would like to hear what people think about where they live, because Virgil and I are so delighted with where we live and continue to be so happy with it, and increasingly so as we come to understand what the community is like more, I think. So I thought I'd try to elicit equivalent stories from other people about hopefully ways in which they love the place that they live, you know, and I forgot all about it because yeah, I got distracted, sidetracked, but talking about something else. Word is nice for about five minutes. <laughs> Would you like to move? I mean, do you imagine yourself someday moving to some place you prefer over Florida? Anybody else want to share thoughts about where they live? What's nice about it, what you like about it, what you don't like about it. I'm all ears, we'll read it out loud, I'm curious. Yeah, you were born there and never leaving? So you like the fact that it's home and familiar and you know all the nooks and crannies and stuff, huh? I haven't talked to any famous people except for the people around here. The idea of the channel was never to actually speak to celebrities, it was that by interviewing regular people, this will become famous or I find what's famous about them or what deserves to be famous about them. That kind of conceit, you know. It didn't work out like that, but that was the idea for the channel. I live in New Jersey. It's very mixed opinions. So you live in the Garden State. Do you find that the part of New Jersey that you live in is consistent with its name as the Garden State? Are there a lot of gardens? You don't like the kids here. Okay. Well, you don't have to stay. <laughs> but that's not what this channel is. The channel is what it is now, like what you're experiencing right now, which is, I just live stream all the time. It turned out to be quite difficult to find uh, regular people who wanted to be interviewed. And, uh, so I just kept making content that didn't involve anybody else. And before I knew it, you know, that's what this channel was. I don't like the kids in Greenville. Are you, I thought you meant here talking about famous people. Should be the bagel state. That's what we're known for north. So Flax and Kestrel 55 thinks that New Jersey should be the bagel state. Well, that's a good name for it. Uh, Greenville kids ain't no good, says the top. Would you like to move the top to a different place? If so, do you have a place in mind where you think you like it? Hey, why not, Isaiah Rude? You know, it took me very much longer than everybody else around me who was consistent about making content. So it probably won't take you as long as it took me. You have the advantage of being young. Well, I don't know. That might be an advantage by now, depending on the circumstances. <coughs> Thanks, Daystream, and I'm glad I call me nerves. Or this channel does. Oh, what's up, bro? Remember me? Yes, I remember you, champion.
All right, see you, Rachel. I'll see you in bed. I always wanted to be interviewed on a talk show, as long as they ask good questions. If you could go anywhere just to go somewhere, or just to see something, where would you go? Well, for Lex and Kestrel, I, uh, I'm so happy where I am that when Rachel and I go somewhere, it's usually for a reason. For example, we're going to see LCD Sound System in Oregon in May. And while we're there, we're going to visit Lou, a channel person here. We visited her before. And, uh, Think of it. Let me think of something. It's like <laughs> until I until I started live streaming, and especially lately, but this maybe dates back well before that. I would not have believed that there was such a thing as like like I would not have believed that quote-unquote, homophobia was common in the world. There, there were actually very many people who disliked gays or hated them or whatever you want to call it. Um, but <laughs> around this channel, I see, and this is definitely not a channel that encourages or attracts that sort of stuff. I just still see it. Just It's rampant. I've noted that for years. I just kind of got used to it. But... Uh, Kind of shocking, really. Uh, me and my friend want to live together in a penthouse. In what place would you like to live in a penthouse? But if I got to choose a place to go that wouldn't require me to travel there. So I'm going to eliminate all the travel considerations. Like, might not be some place I want to go because I don't want to take a long plane ride, right? But no, I'm obviously not. I was, I'm just kind of shocked at, at how prevalent it is. The, the, you know, the prevalence that, uh, that like gay slurs uh, occur on YouTube is it's just sort of ways to attack me. Even for example, people will call me various gay slurs and stuff, which is, it just seems strange to me, I don't know, like, I guess other places are a little bit less civilized than that, civilized than that, like, in California, you know, but, um, it could also just be the anonymity aspect of things, it's hard to say. I mean, when people are trying to attack me by using gay slurs, it's just, uh, it obviously is very strange because, like, I'm on my third wife, all of them, women, obviously, and, uh, <laughs> I, I mean, I, I'm not saying that I'm super masculine or anything. I never felt as though I was, especially masculine, but I, uh, I don't think you're going to get much, you're not going to find much ground trying to attack me for being gay, both because it's like attacking me for being short. I just, I'm not short. I'm six foot five. I'm, you might not consider that super tall, but you pretty much can't consider it short, right? So, when people try to attack you for things you aren't, it's kind of just, it didn't have any, it didn't land at all, but what it is, is revelatory about how rampant that kind of talk is, and, you know, if it's directed at me for where it doesn't land at all, imagine if I actually were gay, and I'd probably be subjected to even more of it, you know? Just, it's just surprising to me. 
Ace, what I want to encourage you to do is next time be less unoriginal. I've heard that one million times. <laughs> All right, I'll bite, Chiro. We'll find out how, what I'm walking myself into. Michael Cheese Harry, 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 Michael Cheese Harry. I don't know what that, uh, I don't know what I accomplished there. I don't know what that means. If I could give any advice to a 19 year old, what would it be? Well, the, I give, people ask me this very regularly and I have kind of a set of different answers I sometimes give. This time I'll give the answer, uh, avoid any big life defining decisions. In other words, preserve your ability to make decisions for later. Avoid getting um, married. You know, don't get yourself locked up in jail. Don't, don't, uh, don't get yourself seriously injured so that you so got to cope with something for the rest of your life. You know, that kind of stuff. Be safe. Be careful. Be prudent. Err on the side of caution. The one-third of people don't progress past the stage of development where they can tolerate the existence of things that make them personally feel icky. Have I ever called the cops on someone? Online? No. No, I've never called the cops on someone online. I mean, keep in mind, I'm almost always producing content. I'm not making it. Have you, champion? I'm not especially worried about having the cops called on me because I have such a small community here, you know. We haven't yet gone to the sheriff station to kind of give them a heads up that um, we might get swatted or something like that. But we plan to shortly, so, you know. What's your favorite memory you can share with us? <coughs> Well, one of my favorite memories is when I went to go talk to the city of Pomona and some lawyers and stuff about this tasing tasing, <coughs> tasing incident. Um, that happened in Pomona. So, in this incident that happened in Pomona, uh, there was a guy who was kind of like maybe a mentally ill homeless person, I'm not sure, who was on somebody's porch with, it's unclear exactly what it was, I heard from some people a sword, uh, I heard from, you know, it could be, looked to me more like a, a stick or something, I'm not sure what it was, maybe a machete, something like that, right? And uh, the thing about that is, uh, am I a copycat because I'm wearing a hat? I'm wearing overalls, <laughs> a wool pea coat, a TWP t shirt, and a hat that's not like the hat Heisenberg wore. Plus, I've got a full beard, unlike Heisenberg. There's absolutely nothing about me that is Heisenberg-esque, except for the happenstance reality that I, too, like Heisenberg, am wearing a hat. Big juicy white tea. You're going to have to do better than that. <coughs> um, anyway. You, you got the unoriginality bingo card too, so congrats on that. What was I saying before that? I forgot distracted by half wit here. Thanks, Rachel. That helps. Oh, does he? I don't remember. 10K money cucumber finger. Right, thanks. Appreciate it. Uh, so anyway, the cops 
started first they beanbag shot gun shot him a bunch of times then they started tasting the fuck out of him for no good reason i was filming the whole thing and everyone was just kind of standing there in shock silence right and then i said stop tasting him and then other people started saying stop tasting him right Well, there was this cop who I guess thought I was kind of the ringleader of this because I started it, right? And he came over, I was holding my phone up above my head filming, and he came over and he pushed me off of the curb with the back of his beanbag gun, with the butt of his beanbag gun. Um, and obviously, I was not happy about that. Like, you just assaulted me. What are you doing? You know, I, I was... Very, I was indignant and surprised, needless to say, that the police officer would do such a thing. So, one of my favorite memories is the memory of going in and telling the whole story about everything that happened in front of all those people in Pomona. And then they gave me $5,000. What time is it? 10 till 10. So that's one of my better memories. And also, I've provided, I know, an affidavit for, it was very useful for the guy who got tased because his lawyer was there questioning me. That was the guy who was questioning me. Was the guy who got tased lawyer. Or it wasn't his lawyer, actually. It was an investigator working for that lawyer. Well, thanks for asking. So that's one of my favorite memories, going there and telling, because I killed it. <laughs> you know, I absolutely killed it. It, it was the dream, uh, despondent, is what they call The person who gets de de deposed? I, I don't know what they call it, but I was, for that guy, lawyers, investigator, I was just the absolute dream person to be dis deposed. Well, uh, yeah, I'll be online tomorrow. Are you trying to imply that you called the cops on me? Is that what you're doing here? Did you call the cops on me? You called the cops on me. I mean, you want to come and see if nothing's going on? Well, I'll say, come on inside and check it out yourself. Thanks, Shrek69. What time are you going to be on tomorrow? Oh, whenever I get up, you know. I usually give them live all the time. Where's the cat? The cats are inside now. Okay, so all right, bye. <laughs> the champion here is trying to imply that he's called the cops on me. Of course, there's nothing to call the cops on me for legitimately, so <laughs> if that were the case, then He'd be illegitimately calling the cops on me. And that would be a very foolish endeavor because one way or another, we'd be able to figure out who it is from this account. You know, I'm sure the cops would. So those of you who are leaving, goodbye. Have a good night. Have a good evening. Yeah, I'm going to have a cigarette right now. Can we go live? I'm, I am live right now. I mean, you want to talk to me on video or something. I don't generally like to do that. Uh, I'm most comfortable doing this. Me and Rachel comprise enough people to do this. Cool. Well, I mean, that was, I mean, he was super careful about how he did it, right? So, 
it's hard to actually accuse him of any wrongdoing. He, he asked a question, have I ever called the cops on someone online? As a way of avoiding, basically, being reportable. But I understood what he was doing. I'm not worried about it, because obviously, we're not doing anything. I'd be happy to just let the cops come in the house, etc. As good a chance as not, that if they were to show up, I'd be standing right here. They'd come and be like, freeze, whatever, or say, hey, I'm just live streaming, we just got swatted, please go inside, check it out. There's nothing going on, it's just me and my wife, that's it. Just chilling, hanging out, live streaming. We only have Mariposa County Sheriffs here. Mariposa County Sheriffs are uh, not insane. Okay, so I'm not, I'm not too worried about, about any crazy shit going on. This is a small community. It's hard to pull that kind of shit here, you know. <laughs> I am fortunate. Yeah, he wants the cops to be, um, like, oh, you know what? This is really, you guys have a really nice place here, we, and, uh, we think you're very nice. <laughs> it used to be a competition debate coach. So for me, obviously, when people can't, can't compete in words, the sane and sensible ones just uh, chalk it up as an alley, you know? Learn something from it. Maybe if you can't beat them, join them, etc. Uh, then they just get thready because they're mad <laughs> and they want to provoke some kind of response from me. They can't with their words because they're not that deft with the words. It's pretty chilly. Uh, right now my hand's really cold. <sighs> Doesn't matter. Hello, how are you? It's fine. Show media is confused. Is that unusual, show media? Isn't that pretty much like commonplace if you're frequently confused Jitsu, what you do when welcome back and how you drew when well if I can you please stop being such a authoritarian okay and if you're going to be in Thornton, get it right. Russia is the motherland. All right? It's not the fatherland. Putin is obviously horrible. No decent person supports him. So knock it off and don't be a dick. Down in California. You see someone very similar to me tonight? I mean, I'm in Mariposa County. California. I was at the Grove tonight. Were you at the Grove? I speak a little bit of Spanish. I can say, I demasiado chupacabras in este pueblo. I can say a few words of Japanese. I was from watching so much anime. Thanks, Kujitsu. Yeah, a lot of new faces around the stream. Just wonderful. A lot of opportunities to Maybe get people who want to come back, you know? Sap is dream world. Hi, good morning. Good evening to you. For me, it is not even 10 o'clock yet in the evening. So, it's not morning yet for me. Uh, but for you it is, so good morning. What anime do I watch? I watch, like, basically everything that comes out on Crunchyroll that's good. So, like, I just finished the current season. Uh... Mostly this week was the last episode for most of them. Yeah, I've watched all of Jujutsu Kaisen. Uh, I mean, basically, you name it, unless it's super old, I've watched it. It was good. 
Unless it's like a super girly love cartoon. I don't really watch the loved ones that much. Oh, that will you stop lying? It's 10 p.m. here. 10 p.m. and too cold to stand outside. My favorite of the last five years or so, you know, from 2020 forward, is currently Free Run Journey's End. Although, in close second is uh, Jowless Reincarnation. I've got a list of my top 20 animes from 2020 through 2024, which I will share right now. I am. I like Iskai, you know. But. I'll take. I'll take, like, a Tommy game, like, Rivers Harem shows, too. I like those. <laughs> Uh, anything swords and dragons -y, magic powers, anything like that, we'll watch that. I don't have a favorite color. I should say black, because the thing is, Sean said, when somebody asks you that question, Eric, you just have to think about it like this. If I could only wear one color for the rest of my life, what color would it be? Well, obviously it'd be black, but I think that'd probably be true for everybody, right? Spit some bars, you're gonna make a rap song out of it. Okay. Um, spit some bars. I'll make a rap song out of it. Spit some bars, my bro. Spit some bars. I'll make a rap song out of it, and you can hear how it goes. There you go. I wish to cook delicious Indian food for lunch and invite him to lunch. Where do I invite you? <laughs> um, I mean, I'm not in the habit of meeting up with brand new people who offer random lunch invitations. It would also necessarily be the case if I were to meet up with anybody, you'd be meeting with me and my wife. I am not interested in any sort of nudity behind it. You can have it. That's fine, side cheek. It's not plagiarism. It's just sampling, right? So he's doing his sampling, and he's welcome to have all the rights to that. Brilliant though it was. I could make other raps if you'd like. Like, it ain't pla <laughs> it ain't plagiarism. It ain't plagiarism. I'll make a rap song out of another's. Oh, it ain't plagiarism. It ain't plagiarism. You just gotta have some brothers. <laughs> like that. <laughs> Johnny Cash is the man in black. I'm in brown. I've got my brown overalls on. Bye, hill hillbilly creativity. Your favorite colors are killer red, gray, peach, black, baby blue, and white. That's too many favorite colors. You have to have one favorite color. Pan Tostado. Hello. Um... <laughs> Okay, sure. Sorry, your English is bad. And you know, it's not impossible. It's just, uh, it's just one of those things that probably happens after somebody's been around the channel for quite a while, you know? And Rachel and I both feel comfortable with them. Bienvenidos a El Primo de Eric. Mi nombre es Eric. Y bienvenidos. Verdad. Hay demasiados chupacabras en este pueblo, pero también yo hablo español a los chatereros. Brandon Valdez, are you saying my Spanglish is horrible? Hey, hey, hey. That's hurtful. Jay Trinidad says, gracias. You're welcome. De nada, as they say in, in Espanol. As the founding genius behind Pepe's Piping Hot Piñatas, I believe I have a true connection with the Mexican people. I fill my piñatas with 
piping hot flan so that families all over the world can enjoy a dangerous but exciting piñata experience and conclude it with a celebratory handful of piping hot flan. Hmm. So hopefully you all understood all of that. I'm sorry if I confused some of you with my multilingualism. The key takeaway is that there are too many chupacabras in this Pueblo. All right, that's the key takeaway. Righteous Flax and Kestrel, thanks for being here. No expectations. I appreciate any intention you feel like giving it. Otherwise, you know, you do you. Uh, okay, show me the when are we performing? We're not performing right now. We performed tonight, but unfortunately, I failed to record it due to just being a boneheaded dummy. I had it all set up, but then it's like when she said it's your turn, it's like I just all my attention was like, okay, we're gonna go get on stage now and try to do this, and I just forgot to turn on the camera. So. If you want to put a dunce cap on me and make me sit in the corner, I understand and respect that. I deserve that. I am indeed a dunce. But what I could do is put up the previous, yeah. Oh, si, mi espanol, mi español es. Bueno, tú tienes muchas conversaciones con este residences. We sang three songs. We sang What's Wrong with the Ladies. We sang Jesus People. And we sang Wonderful, Wonderful Kitty. And I told that dorky dad joke that I heard on YouTube in between two songs, which is uh, a magician from Mexico is performing a trick. He says, uno, dos. And then poof, he disappears without a trace. I thought it was a, a good joke to tell, you know, a good family friendly dorky dad joke to, to tell uh, in between songs. So, uh, thanks, Sport Productions. I need a Spanish song. I should write a song in Spanish called I Demasiado Chupacabras in Este Pueblo. Que es el nombre tu, de tu banda? Well, we play under the name Eric and Rachel at the moment. So if I were to form, formally name the uh, uh, musical performance, then I would name it Talking with Fancy. We'll just keep things, everything under one branding umbrella, you know. But we just write down Eric and Rachel. We're a couple of local people playing with local open mic, which is great. Um, you want me to spit some bars, huh? I don't do a whole lot of rapping, per se. But, uh, I could play a song we did not play tonight, but that people seem to like a lot when they hear it. How many people hear it? 32. I don't know, I don't know how many people are new or not. But I'll play this for anybody who's new. It's most uh, bar-like thing. Then maybe I'll play a new song that I'll make up on the fly called Demasiado Chupacabras in Este Pueblo. He's Gregory in disguise, hands in his pockets. Now he's walking down the drive, upwards his eyes. He doesn't want you guys to realize that he's Gregory. In disguise, hands in his pockets. Now he's walking down the drive, averts his eyes. He doesn't want you guys to realize that he's Gregory. In disguise, he takes the lies. Want to confront the men, always telling them. But every time he tries, they only run and hide. Again, he is denied. Chance to yell at them. Because he's Gregory. In disguise, hands in his pockets. Now he's walking down the drive, averts his eyes. He doesn't want you guys to realize that he's Gregory. 
In this guy's hands and pockets, now he's walking down the drive. I've heard his eyes. He doesn't want you guys to realize that he's Gregory in disguise. He hates the lies, wants to confront the men, always telling them. Every time he tries, they only run and hide. Again, he is denied the chance to yell at them until the bridge brings a new approach. Sneakily, he'll try to encroach upon the guilty, then perhaps he'll get the chance to yell at them. He's Gregory in disguise, hands in his pockets. Now he's walking down the drive, averts his eyes. He doesn't want you guys to realize that he's Gregory in disguise, hands in his pockets. Now he's walking down the drive. Averts his eyes. He doesn't want you guys to realize that he's Gregory in disguise. There you go. There's a little number for you who wanted me to spit some bars. I didn't spit bars, but I played that song. Hopefully that is good enough. Thanks, Ross. You're a hero in your music tastes. <laughs> I now need a beverage probably other than coffee. Coffee, it should be plenty thirst quenching because what is it? It's almost all water. But instead, it doesn't necessarily make you feel less thirsty. Thanks, Boba Fett. I appreciate it. It got, it got uh, really great response last time because people talked to us about it this time it was crazy uh the cook at the food truck it's on the premises um said are you the gregory guy i'm like yeah <laughs> and he's all oh that's my daughter's new favorite song we found it on youtube <laughs> and i literally i, I was so shocked i said did you just say you found it on YouTube? I said, yeah. I'm like, wow, thank you so much, you know? I like Guy Ritchie movies, sure. Do I like beer? I like non-alcoholic beer. <laughs> I can't drink, drink regular beer because I don't drink alcohol anymore. I think I'll get a non-alcoholic beer right now, in fact. Thanks, Kijitsu. You know what, Buffett? I never was married to Madonna. Thanks. She's a she's a real sweetheart. Her name's Capia. And uh she's a sweetie potiti. She was born in bed right next to me. My previous cat had a litter of kittens in bed right next to me. Isn't she beautiful? I love her creamy brown stomach. Um, I'll put the uh, I'll put the link here, Ross. I'll put the link for it. Thank you for asking. Uh, you know, I I produced it as well as I could. I'm not I'm not a great music producer, but I did the best I could with the production. I like the video for this. Here you go. Thanks. Yeah, we played Wonderful Kitty. We played, uh, we played, um, What's Wrong with the Lady? And we played Jesus People. Isn't this a nice kitty? What a sweetie. Oh, yes, Capio. Daddy loves you. With this emotion heart. Yes, it's true. I love my kitty with 
my emotion heart. Oh, thanks, Oliver. I did not kidnap your cat. That is my cat, row VR3. Princess Hannah, my cat says hello to you as well. Can I play another member? Sure, I'd be happy to. Uh, let's see. Um, I think I will play. Uh, I'll play Amelia. How about that? Play Amelia. <clears throat> Next, I'll play Cloudy Day. It's a very cloudy day in Los Angeles And today we run out of time Struggles past, struggles still to come The day is nearly done Will someone buy us some more time? Cloudy day in Los Angeles Cloudy day in LA I'm no sort of evangelist But I have something to say Life can strangely be forgiving to those who stay awake all night And mostly voices say to give in They'll try to sap your will to find But whether I'm supposed to be here Or just be soon forgotten noise is sort of based on what I see here and also on what I avoid. It's a very cloudy day in Los Angeles, and today we run out of time. Struggles pass. Trouble's still to come The day is nearly done Will someone buy us some more time? Cloudy day in Los Angeles Cloudy day in LA I'm no sort of evangelist, but I have something to say, something to say. Yeah, that's pretty good. Pretty good. Thanks, Ross. Um, most wholesome lives I've seen in ages. I'm literally trying to live a sin-free life, but everywhere I turn, it's either a half-naked woman causing me to lust or something else. 
Well, I promise not to be a half-naked woman on any occasion. So, by yourself, I may be tempting you in other ways. Okay, well, actually, I'm sorry. The urge, it's that time of year, the urge is overcome me again. I may have to do this. You know, by yourself, you might want to turn away here. Because... Spring break! Spring break! Ew! Sorry, I... I guess I can't promise to not be a half-naked woman sometimes. I don't know how to play Hotel California. Thanks, Philip Holmes. Appreciate your feedback. Always enjoy constructive criticism like that. Um... Otherwise, you know, how are you going to learn? All right, so let's, I don't have an OnlyFans. Uh, I don't have a day job, Philip Holmes. Uh, unless you call hanging around the house, live streaming, you know, doing the dishes, uh, having non-alcoholic beers, unless you call that a day job. Uh, I just, I guess I didn't really think about it that much. No, Sean Ranklin, I don't want to make an OF. Doy. I don't think it's the case that most people experience that, Boba Fett, okay? Unfortunately, Brandon Valdez, I've only ever produced my own music, which, I'm, as I mentioned before, I'm not a very good music producer. I don't, I'm not good at recording, I'm not particularly good at mixing, I'm not good at mastering. <laughs> I'm really not good at any of it. So, I do the best I can recording my own music, but I don't think that I do a good job of it. Certainly, I don't think I do a good job of producing my own music. I would love to have somebody else who knows what they're doing better than I do in that area to produce my music, but... Say la vie. Maybe someday. Where are you going? I guess what... You have to make at least one guess, then I'll tell you. Um, chicken butt? Where am I going? I'm not going anywhere. Is animal pain and human pain different? Uh, probably not. Do I play a lot on my channel? I do play frequently on my channel. Uh, you know, if I didn't feel as though people got, would get bored quickly and go away, then I would probably play more. I do enjoy playing on my channel. I mostly play the, my originals, but I do sometimes have cover fests. I don't, no, I don't, I don't know that many, like, I could play basically most songs that I know how to sing. Those chord progressions aren't too, too super complicated. What I mean by I can play them is that I could, if I see, have, if I have the comps, I can play and sing it without having ever played it before. Oh, that was a good guess though. I took dehydrated orange slices and then soak them in apple juice. Now I have oranges that taste like apples. It's mind blowing. That's amazing, actually. I, I kind of wanna wanna try that now. I don't know any red hot chili peppers, but I could probably play the song, Ricardo. Um, Sometimes I feel like I like that song. Why do I keep saying that I might get swatted? Well, I've had more than one person intimate at that 
when they get frustrated. I don't know if it's a, it doesn't mean I think they're actually going to do it, but it puts it in my head. What if chicken will start eating humans after evolution? Well, then, uh, yeah, I smoke Marlboro Reds. Then, uh, they're going to have to uh, evolve firearms, probably. Rolling Stones. You can play some Rolling Stones. That's a couple of them. I like Dead Flowers. Play that. I don't love a ton of um, Rolling Stones songs, but I do like that one and some others. Yes, I'm your grandmother. It does get windy here, but th this house is really well designed, okay? This particular spot by the door here seems to be immune to wind. I'm not quite sure how they manage that, but uh, I also have a trash can over there, so I can just empty it when I feel like. I don't really know any Bob Seger. I can't even think really of any Bob Seger songs. I mean, I listen to a lot of new music. I don't, I don't listen to a lot of old music, really. Can I play Seven Nation Army? Probably, but it's kind of probably a boring song to play. Like, I listen to Johnny. He's an artist that I frequently find myself saying, well, here's an example, right? On the way to town, Rachel and I listened to Baby No Money, a couple of Baby No Money songs. We listened to Super Organism, Super Organism song. We listened to uh, Let's Get Retarded in Here by Black Eyed Peas. We listened to uh, Think About Things, I don't even know how to say that artist's name. <laughs> Ross, that's absolutely not true. All the way you've got good taste in rappers. I'm quite fond of Baby No Money myself. Rainy Red, doing great. How are you? I am transracial, true. I don't know through the fire and the flames. Oh, somebody recommended I needed a song in Spanish. I was thinking about uh, making up a song right now in Spanish called Ay Demasiado Chupacabras en Este Pueblo. That's probably what I'll do. Just need a few Spanish lines. They don't necessarily have a lot to do with each other, and they'll be fine. Can you play the logical sound by the Super Tramps? I can't play that one because I don't know how it goes. I have to know that how the I have to be able to sing it in order to play it at all. If I can sing it, I have a song with two Spanish words on it. Do I? Hmm. What is that song? If this is a trivia contest about my own music, I, I lose this contest. Which song is it? I have no idea. I am not familiar with the song. I'm, I'm familiar with uh, Super Tramp, but I don't know the logical song. I don't think so. Maybe if I heard it, I'd recognize it, but... Hmm. You know, the other thing is certain kinds of songs are easier to play on a guitar than others. I mean, I can't listen to it on the stream. I might get copyrighted, you know? I could listen to a speck of it while muting the stream, but... Um, Maybe and see if I recognize it.
I'm gonna go with the devil has some good songs. Don't know if it's your preference. Not heard of Amigo, the devil. Alright, I'll check it out. I'll see if I recognize it. It does sound familiar. The title sounds familiar, so I know I know I do I I know for a fact that there are some Super Tramp songs I I do like. <coughs> I just can't think of what they are at the moment. I also know for a fact there are some Oreo Speedwagon songs I like. I just can't think of what they are at the moment. Can somebody hide Fusky 40, please? I'll do. Okay, thank you, Oliver. Appreciate it. All right, I'll check it out. Let's see what we got here. Oh, I gotta go get the plug. Hold on. No, don't unhide him. What are you doing? Hide him again, Oliver. Why did you unhide him? Thank you. Oh, I guess I did bring it back in. Yeah, I did bring it back in. Or maybe I didn't even take it outside. I don't know. Here we go. Check your charge connector. There we go. Um, I will Google it. Maybe I do know it. Hold on. Just because I don't can't think of it by the title. All right. Let me listen to a bit of it. Yeah, I know that song for sure. I know that song a lot. Uh, I like that song. Let's see what it looks like in terms of the chords and stuff. When I was young, it seemed that life was so wonderful. A miracle, oh beautiful, magical. And all the birds in the trees, will they be singing so happily, joyfully, playfully, watching me? Or didn't they send me away to teach me how to be sensible, logical, oh practical? And they showed me a world where I could be so dependable, clinical. Cynical. I don't know the chorus. There are time. I have to listen to the chorus to see how it goes. It's kind of difficult to play, maybe. But I like it. I do like that song a lot. What's it like where I live? It's polluted from vinyl chloride, streets littered with needles, homeless and poverty, mostly cloudy, cold and stale. Where do you live, Richard Skye? Anything you like about it? Listen to Johnny Highland and do a reaction? Okay. I can do that. Anything in particular I should listen to?
I see uh, three albums. Give me the the best song of his. No, I don't like that song. I don't like you two at all, really. <sighs> Nickel Dumb. We don't want to hear your racist joke. I call them individuals. Or individuals who are not defined by their some arbitrary group, group label that somebody might put on them. He don't become a mod. Freeborn Man? Okay, I'll check it out. Freeborn Man. Which I'll, I'll figure it out. No, I'm not going to watch you eat right now, cat. Just chill the fuck out. Let's see. Freeborn Man. There it is. All right. I'm going to meet this for a second and listen to Freeborn Man and see what I think about it. I mean, I, it's not for me. It's, it's somebody who's very good at playing the guitar, which I can respect, but, uh, it's, uh, yeah, he's very good at playing the guitar. There's no doubt about that, but I just don't find that something I want to listen to really kind of like straight ahead, uh, very skilled blues guitar. It's just not my thing, really. I mean, I like good songwriting. I like I like stuff that's good, you know? It it runs the gamut from hip hop to indie rock to you know, like rave music to whatever. I don't know why New Yorkers are so bad at Clash of Clans. Is it be you please don't spam? Is it because they have too many burrows? <laughs> I don't like guitar solos. <laughs> Why are they? Okay, that was funny though, actually. You just shouldn't have spammed the first part of it. I want to say a good job to you, Nickel Dumb, for the joke. I just wish you'd let me get around to your thing without spamming it. All right, it's not a terrible joke. Why are New Yorkers so bad at Clash of Clans? And the answer is because they lost two towers. <laughs> How and you, amigo the devil, check it out. All right, I will check it out. And I will mute it. I'll tell you what I think. I'll listen to at least some of it, okay? I just, I don't, I'm not into guitar soloist people at all, you know. All right, let me listen to it and see what I think. Well, I think it may be good. Um, I think his songwriting may be good. That song I used to listen to. But the thing is, like, that song needs 
to have as a recorded track. It needs to have like drums drop in and a bass and stuff like that. Just having him sing a banjo song, it needs more to it, you know? It just needs more. I'm not going to listen to Ingve Malmsteen, okay? I'm sorry. I, it's not that I hate Ingve, it's just I don't want to listen to it, right? It's not like he's He's playing earworm kind of songs, songs you can sing along with. Is you're supposed to sort of appreciate his skill, right? Not enjoy the music. So that's just not my kind of thing at all. Ghost of the Devil says, ha 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 ha. Nickel Dunn says, a bit racist. Antique farming tools. Yeah, I actually think I've heard that joke before. As racist jokes go, it's not so bad, but nevertheless. <laughs> Ghost of the Devil says, dumb ass. You say that I'm a dumb ass or somebody else? N Um, don't much care for your name. Kind of triggery. Just get rid of you, I think. Goes the devil. Bye. Have a good evening. My son loves Judas Priest. I'm not a fan of Judas Priest, really. Uh, maybe I was when I was a kid. Breaking the law, breaking the law, you know. Eating like a kid by Mac DeMarco would be a good cover. Say what? I say dumbass. Now you said bye. I said bye. Have a good evening. What about flectones? I'm not familiar with flectones. No, I I got it, Ghost the Devil. Yeah, I understand. You, you can say the word ass. I mean, I, I will time you out or hide you for spamming, but I would kind of hope you'd be able to to troll a little better than that, you know? Did you hide him, Oliver, or just time him out? I time him out good, thanks. I appreciate that. I'm hoping that he's going to come back and try to do a better job of trolling. Do I listen to any prolific instrumentalists? No, I, I only like to listen to, like, good tracks, you know? I'm not interested in the skill of the people. I'm interested in whether the track is a, is a banger or not, you know? Yo, back when I was a kid, none of us understood that uh, that Judas Priest was gay. We just thought, like, oh, I guess that's, like, tough manliness. Sophie B. Hawkins. Not sure who Sophie B. Hawkins is. All right, you have a question. I will. I will do that, Mike Ward. Lucas Mucus says we look alike. NGL. Well, maybe we do. I don't know. I've never seen you before. I can vaguely see your circle over there on the screen, but I'm not sure exactly what it looks like. Nirvana has some excellent songs. Nirvana was the, the best of their milieu, but I think that that whole aesthetic is kind of has a kind of low ceiling aesthetically because it's trying to be all serious and, you know, like, uh, it just, it just can't help but be pretentious. Uh, that, that whole aesthetic, right? I'm not saying Nirvana necessarily was, but growl is goat. I don't know growl. If anybody wants to see, like, in general, what's the music, what kind of music do I listen to, what kind of stuff do I like, or whatever, I'm going to put here a link to Chappie Tracks. This is a playlist I have that's a uh, playlist exclusively of um, 
other people's songs, not my own at all. And I try to upload it regularly. I try to update it regularly with new music. It currently has 177 videos on it. And you will find that almost everything on the playlist is absolutely excellent. But maybe not absolutely everything, but almost. Okay. Anyway, I'll, I'll share the link here. So if you want to either know what kind of music to listen to, or have the best playlist imaginable to listen to yourself, then check that playlist out. Do I have a list of my own music? Yes, I do have a list of my own music. And I will get that for you as well. Obviously, you know, it's no Chappie tracks, but it's Host Eric's Greatest Hits. Um, in no particular order, as I have it ordered right now, it is not the case that my best songs are at the top or anything, so. And it's kind of haphazardly organized. But it's got 60 videos on it. It's, I guess, what I consider my 60 best finished tracks, as finished as I can get them anyway. I have an LTD guitar. It's, uh, it's an acoustic, it's an electric guitar, but it's got kind of a hollow body, so it's louder than your average electric guitar when you play it unplugged. I really like this guitar. I'm really pleased with it. I'm very happy with it, so I don't need any other guitar. I also have a bass. I'm not even sure what kind of bass it is, really, but it's an excellent bass. If you sing what you play, I mean, I'm always singing over what I play. I play a lot of a lot of different songs. I I never really solo the guitar, so to speak. You know, solo on the guitar. I'm good as far as gear goes. I, I'm very happy with this guitar. For a lot of years, I played on this horribly difficult to play acoustic guitar with super high action. But I'm, I love this LTD. And uh, <coughs> my bass setup is kick ass. And it was not very expensive, but I named my best chord progression. Perhaps one of the most interesting chord progressions I've ever written is for this song called Second Night. Uh, <clears throat> try to get the guitar in frame here so you can see what I'm doing. It goes so it's on C sharp minor. C sharp minor and then this chord. I'm not sure what it is, but anyway. It's the second night when you start to feel strange and you're wondering if the range is on sending sparks a soar in the kitchen sky an actual night is there no top to the dark up above the shelves where she stores the chai above the sleeping forms of vivid mind figurines of western lonely types they lie beneath a million running suns they're rugged and they're done with the actual night. So, I like the chord progression of that song, but I've written a lot of songs, and you know, like one of them, 
more difficult songs for me to remember that has a good chord progression is Enemy Ground. Don't really feel like playing right next. I gotta bring up the thing, but I don't know. I'm never really quite sure what I'm doing with my chord progressions. I don't really know any music theory, so I just uh, I just write the songs based on what they're what they are supposed to be. You know, sometimes I'll have I'll make up songs with singing part first and have to figure out how to play the chords for it you know that's uh yeah what do you want trouble you don't need me to man all right i was gonna play i demasiado tuba cowboy at the next day pueblo i forgot Ay, demasiado tu cabra In este pueblo el noche Oh, yes, ay Demasiado tu cabra in este pueblo Y donde está La Bibliotheque La Bibliotheque is a la playa Donde esta? Donde esta? La playa Ahora hoy Demasiado chupacabra, hay demasiado chupacabra en este pueblo. <laughs> really? Well, if he's really the most skilled guitarist you've seen, would he be able to do that? Would he be able to play hay demasiado chupacabra en este pueblo? Probably not. I really appreciate the uh, comment of the person above. I, I appreciate it when people provide, you know, blisteringly succinct critique. Where is it here? Are you retarded? Explore the France. Uh... If if I were retarded, I would lack sufficient metacognition to be able to draw that distinction. But I appreciate the question. I don't want to look up man. I don't want to know now. James Ortez Ortiz says, "Is this barrio, Mister Rogers?" I'm not in the barrio, and I'm not Mister Rogers, so double no. T Money May twenty two. Thanks. You play Fortnite. Good job for you. What's your name? My name is Eric. Good job for me. Thank you. No, thank you, Boba Fett. Angel XOXO Love Speed Purple. Hi, how are you? Good to see you. Dennis Tanner, hello, good evening, and welcome to Talking with Fantasy People. Boba Fett, you're just gonna be opening a can of worms. Everyone's gonna want to be made mod. No, I'm not playing that game right now. I will take it away as soon as I possibly can. So just be happy with it for five seconds and don't get into trouble. Not us piss throw. Not much is up. What is up with you? I'm live streaming here in the night. No, Dennis Tanner. Kind of a a vulgar, crass, and classless question, regardless. But uh, definitely not. This time, I married the hottie. <coughs> Meow. Meow, silly trouble.
What is tap? What is a tapestry? A tapestry is a uh, is a basically like a rug you hang on your wall. Talk uh, out so thing provocative. Talk about something provocative. You want me to talk about something provocative? I could. I uh, I'm not sure where I'm going in this stream at the moment. I. Uh, I'm not particularly filled with notions to discuss, but that's fine. I can always come up with various things to talk about. Regardless, the moment I just playing it by ear, it's time for me to pull some bong ribs. I mean, you can debate. Well, Jay, if you want to debate something, um, why don't you debate whether or not Florida should have prohibited kids from having social media accounts. That seems to be the most interesting topic of the day. Yes, I do have a guitar. I was just playing it a second ago, actually, but I'm not playing it at the moment. No, I don't have a flute. I have a guitar. I have a bass. I have a recorder, but no flute. I have a harmonica. I'm not going to play Free Bird. I don't know how to play Free Bird. Eric, that types who? ENTP. I don't know who you're talking about. Social media is self surveillance. Let everyone have it. I mean, it's, uh, it's quite ridiculous that they would do such a thing because social media isn't anything exactly specific, right? It's just a platform, a means of people that people can use to communicate with each other. It's true that it's a less civil environment than real life, mostly, right? Uh, in real life, people who are emboldened by anonymity to be quite toxic in their language typically don't talk that way you know actually Dennis you, you asked the question and I answered it uh Guess you didn't hear my answer. Oh, hi, do you obviously? Because <coughs> <coughs> I always appreciate it when people come in to try to attack me or troll me or something. But obviously, I'm not going to uh, let people speak disrespectfully to or about Rachel. Um, she doesn't deserve that. And <laughs> it's just a sign of weakness, ultimately, you know? Uh, Well, I can do whatever I want, Jay, so I'm not worried about that. You know, I already have a rifle at the house that I inherited, so obviously I can. I didn't hide you, JC. I mean, I, look, obviously, I am perfectly capable of taking care of myself, making good decisions for myself. The kind of intoxicants that I use don't uh, impact my ability to use a firearm or anything like that, nor impact my judgment regarding the usage of them. Maybe my judgment might be impacted to say we're around mushrooms, but hopefully the need won't arise under that circumstance, you know? Uh, I mean, absolutely, I'm a law-abiding citizen. I'm exactly the kind of person who should have a handgun. Namely, somebody who understands why they have it, has no interest in using it, unless absolutely necessary, and, uh, etc. I don't remember timing you out, JC. I don't know what you're talking about. Mm. 
you know, it, it's not as though I believe there is any other adult male out there or adult woman out there who's somehow more qualified to have a handgun than me or would be more reliably entrusted with one. I have all the the moral calculations on the matter already completed correctly. I've articulated specifically the circumstances under which I could conceivably be compelled to use one and how I'd probably err, I definitely would err on the side of um, making sure not only that I'm justified in shooting the person, but that it's necessary. So I'm exactly the kind of person who should have a gun. Other people should take lessons from me about how to think about firearms. I'll take lessons from others about how to use one. Isn't a creator existing the only logical answer? I mean, it's not a, it's not, it's neither a logical nor illogical answer. It's just a totally speculative notion that can't be substantiated either way and is no more an explanation than the Big Bang or anything else. I've not been timing you out all day for no reason, Jay-Z. Suck it. For fuck's sake. I mean, FFS. Chillax, bro. I don't know. Neither do you, Jay. You're saying, because we don't have an answer to this question, God. That's not how things work, argumentationally, okay? That's just an appeal to ignorance. Thanks, Boba Fett. Thanks for encouraging completely bullshit things. Thanks a lot. <coughs> well, sure, you can define God like that, but uh, simply conveniently defining God such that He's an explanation to the, for the Big Bang. <coughs> I mean, they're not doing anything intellectually, right? The point is, no matter what you want to say about God, right? No matter how you want to define him, quote unquote, uh, it doesn't comprise an explanation because an explanation would articulate how God does things. And we'd be able to to, it would make predictions that we could test, right? It wouldn't just be a bunch of random claims. <sighs> so then, the most important thing we want to do is first state, um, how could somebody who's skeptical of your arguments cross-check them from another argumentational angle to see if they satisfactorily explain something. Um, first of all, I would say what you're really doing is trying to make an argument about God's existence and saying that we can logically deduce God's existence. But remember, to be God requires that um, a relationship with God is executed by a faith. And that precludes you from having 
any deductively certain knowledge of his existence, proof, empirics, the empirical proof for, of his existence or anything like that, if you attempt to do that, whatever you think you've accomplished with your reasoning or your empirics is definitely not to prove God because God, definitionally, is that which you must engage with via faith, which is belief in the absence of proof or reason. So it's important for you to remember that. <sighs> Dummies for INFJ, it should be called. Yesterday doesn't really seem so far away Cause I was always shoveling lots of hay And that is why I'm yay, yay, yay Show media at the helm What you doing there, hey, hey, hey Well, so I've had kind of a a uh, good day, a long day, kind of, not a perfect day, but pretty good. No, I, I'm a Christian, right? I'm a Christian, which means I pray to God and Jesus regularly, which I do. And I recognize that prayer as being a faith-based behavior. I pray to actual God, which is not the God that you can prove, not the God that you can deduce, not the God that you can argumentationally establish, but the God that requires faith. Right, so what I'm saying is, when you try to establish argumentationally that you have some kind of explanation for where everything comes from, why we all exist, etc., you are incorrect to presume that you've argumentationally established that with the arguments you're making. No. I mean, obviously, if you want to define God as the answer to every fundamental cosmological question, then then every cosmological question itself proves God. Well, that's just a purposeless, tautological uh, circularity of definitions that does no intellectual work and ignores all the important questions, which is which are like, what comprises an explanation? What, is, what question are you really trying to answer? No. The thing is, what are you trying to do here, Jay? You need to understand what you're trying to do argumentationally. Are you trying to prove God's existence? Are you trying to establish that God is responsible for the Big Bang? What are you trying to do? Okay. What about that we have a soul? Can we argumentationally establish that? I don't think so, but that not necessarily impossible to argumentationally establish that. Whereas it's... it's Logically impossible to argumentationally establish God. What do I look for in men? Uh, I don't look for anything in men. I'm married happily to a woman. Third marriage is the charm, they say. This is my third marriage. And... Uh, so, there you have it. I mean, the thing is, it is not the case that anybody has successfully proved the soul um, yet, but it's conceivably possible, whereas proving God is, is logically impossible. No, I'm not interested in your... <laughs> For fuck's sake, can people just keep their lusts out of YouTube for a few minutes? It would be much appreciated. Escape the Matrix, my friend. 
Okay, how should I escape the matrix? What do I need to do to escape the matrix? Fatal Exception says, my next marriage will be my third. Hey, third time's the charm, dude. The third one worked out great for me. First two, not so much. What is this stream about? I'm just scrolling. I usually just engage with the chat as I'm doing now, but depending on the uh, circumstances and how much chat I have to work with, I might freestyle notions, whatever, play the guitar sometimes. Where's the eye candy? It's right here, bro. Right here. You were looking at it. I might give you my healing gaze in a second. Plenty of bitches in the sea. Okay, well, that is probably true. But that doesn't mean that I'm not happily married. Nor that I want to have more or different bitches. You know, because this is not something that I super prioritize. I do want to hear something, Dark says. Well, I guess it would depend on what it is. No, I don't believe I'm suffering from Sandy Badge. It's your hand. You are not hand. It's your brain. You are not brain. Well, the thing is, Jay, every human being is both a metaphysical being and a physical being, a physical object. So we are both a biology, and that comprises half of our attentional frames and half of our, of our being. And it accordingly adheres to kind of the laws of objects in space and the other half of a being a human being is a metaphysical half an identity that persists across time you could think of humans as both waves and particles in that way that's just a metaphor k lol k poppy not sure what that's all about what a laugh what a poppy i'm not sure uh they need healing every time they have the sex. So metaphysical being equals soul. Again, though, humans can never be fully human unless they are both half biological, physical, and half metaphysical. Uh, Natus says, I would never marry again. Still married, but wouldn't do it again. <laughs> uh, inner healer says, biological she-male. Uh, I'm just a regular biological male, actually. Do I want to know something? Ethan's world? Well, it would depend what that thing is. Uh, I already answered. Don't don't spam that again, please. What do I do for a living? What I did do for a living was competition, speech, and debate coach. Primary flow debate. Uh, but nowadays, I manage manage the estate, put together, trying to put together uh, income properties. I've got one and it needs to be I'm not quite ready to rent it out yet. You're being held hostage by whom, Ethan's world? I'd guess maybe engineer. No, no, the competition debate coach. You held hostage at gunpoint. Um and you're being instructed to chat with me <laughs> on a live stream. That's a very odd robber. I worked for quite a long time at Rebay Academy and then for quite a long time at, uh, I, obviously Oliver is not allowing it. He's forcing it. He's forcing Ethan's world at gunpoint to participate in this live stream chat. Uh, anyway, um, yeah, I worked for Rebay Academy. Then I worked at this debate only private school that was, uh, called Kudos College of Youth Leadership that we built under quite a successful program. Then I had my own school called Autonomy Debate for a little while. I've not watched any Andrew Tate so I don't know, but I've heard, from what I've heard about him, I uh, am thinking, eh, not so much. Maybe the robber does know about my time travel endeavors. It's true. My dad has those drinks every day, and we have to go into our room for a while. This is a non-alcoholic beer, okay? This is Heineken Zero. I don't drink alcohol. People like to throw shit out, you know? It's crazy. I always wonder, why not just ask some questions? Ash, why not find out what's 
correct before throwing around counterfactual accusations. Hasta la vista. How many dudes did Diddy Diddle since Diddy Did Diddle Do? Excellent question, Weenie Beanie Burr. Excellent question. Uh, I don't know. Uh, dozens? <laughs> dozens of diddlies were diddled by Diddy. JC, can you just stop, please? You keep asking the same questions. Obviously not, because you've got a crush on my wife. Strasby Vladin. No, I don't speak Russian. That's all I can say in Russian. I like non-alcoholic beer because I like beer and I can't drink alcohol. Yeah, well, yeah, I'm down. I am down, bro. I am down like a clown who's frowning and brown. Okay. Where is here? Here? Here is my house. Here is talking with fans, people. Here is the internet. Here is a land of wonder, a land of joy, a land of excitement. Thrills, chills, spills, and gills. Okay, JC. Regardless, just <laughs> stop trying to meet up with us or whatever. Just chill out. She's not here. She's in bed. I'm awake. She's not. She might be awake, but she's in bed. If she is awake, she might be listening to this. If she's both awake and listening to this, she might even chime in here in the chat. Aztec Warrior, good evening, hello, and welcome to Talking with Friends, people. Cast votes on having this. Okay, I will. That's a great poll. Okay, how should I phrase this? Do you... Is there, is there really, do people really have a soul? Do people really have a soul? I have to take the scare quotes off of this. All right, there. Does the soul exist? Who is Rachel? Rachel's my wife. But she is in bed. No, I'm not doing a race poll. No, I'm not doing a race poll. Uh, that's up to you, Oliver Linehan. I don't necessarily... The overwhelming evidence for reincarnation... Like, is there really overwhelming evidence for reincarnation? Well, I mean, we have being beyond biological, which is to say there is the metaphysical half of our existence, the part of the existence that we're engaging right now, in fact. A part of existence including ideas, abstractions, and all kinds of such notions, including self-concepts persisting through time, right? But that doesn't mean that such can exist independent of the biological aspect. It, it, it might be the case, but there's no necessarily reason to believe that. <coughs> Michael, darling, <laughs> the things people say, I tell you, the things people say, Oh, God, I hope I don't reincarnate. I hate you people. That one I like, Blue. Well, in, in the status quo, while you're alive, it exists concurrent with your biology, right? That doesn't necessarily mean it's not separate from your biology, but it also doesn't mean that it can exist independently of your biology. 
Uh, I'm a, I'm a gentle bender. I bend things gently. Where is the soul contained if not outside the body? Ooh, I don't know. Inside the body? I mean, I, that's, you're begging the question, Jay, to ask that. Because the question is, does the soul exist or not? And you're saying, well, if it doesn't exist outside the body, where it does exist? Well, some people say it doesn't exist at all, you know? Time bender. Brain in a jar have a soul? I don't know. I don't have a firm opinion about this matter. I'm asking the poll question. Can you get a different soul or is it tied to you forever? Here's the thing that I want to know, Joshua Silverstein, which is kind of a variant on that. So let's say my soul reincarnates. Currently, I'm Eric, okay? And then my soul leaves my body and gets reincarnated and I'm reborn in a new baby. Her name's Julie. So then, then in that life, I'm Julie. To become Julie, I have to be Julie. I have to jettison everything that makes Eric, Eric. So what exactly is this soul that is the same? What about the soul is the same that makes me the same person if all my specific particular qualities, who I am, my personality, etc., is different now? I have none of the memories or anything. I don't know, Jay. Of course, one would imagine one would lose all your limbs and still have a soul. I'm not saying that it's not possible to still have an identity, have a conscious existence after having lost much, most of one's biological functioning. Okay? Yes, that's possible. But that doesn't mean that one's identity could, say, grow without a biological component or persist without a biological component. Right? You don't have to have the full biology, but as far as we know, thus far, we cannot separate the self-concept identity part from the biology like that. Nobody's saying that, Jay. Nobody's saying that people tie themselves to their bodies. What I'm saying is that we are all both, right? We are all both our physical bodies and biologies and additionally our identities our self-concept etc like if i lost an arm obviously i would persist in self-concept and stuff because losing an arm is not fatal at the same time it would dramatically impact my life emotional well-being self-concept spiritual health, etc. Because, of course, there are strong linkages. I'm, I've never said there's not aspects of the self that aren't biological. In fact, I've said half of the aspects of the self are not biological, okay? They're metaphysical. <laughs> what I've pointed out is we have no reason to believe since in every instance they occur concurrently, that it's conceivably possible to separate one from the other. Just because we can draw distinctions between the two doesn't mean they can exist independently of one another. This is very straightforward, okay? You just need to hear what I'm saying and listen to me. And I'm not saying it necessarily doesn't either, Jay, but you see what I you get what I'm saying? <laughs> okay.
So, all right, fine. That's a good point. You make a good point here. We have instances where we can point to the biology persisting, even though the metaphysical half is not. We don't have any instances of the metaphysical half persisting when the biological half is not. So, uh, one might imagine the metaphysical is contingent on the operationality of the physical. To a certain extent, the the physical is impacted by the metaphysical as well, but you know, you did make a good point about, and I agree that I have to retract my previous statement that the two things can't exist independently of each other. Obviously, yes, the biology can exist independently of the of the metaphysical, and that's true and fine and just, and I stand corrected on that, but. I still, my point would be, we don't, it's still not a good reason to believe that metaphysical can exist independent of the physical. It might be the case, but not a good reason to believe that. The soul is executed by a biomechanics. Maybe, I don't know. But the point is, I don't, I'm not taking a strong position on this. My position is that it might be possible to actually prove or establish a soul, unlike God, which it is that's definitionally precluded, okay, by the nature of God. The soul carries sub-biological or super-biological memories that are passed on to the body and brain. So, like, okay, side cheek, what do you think? What do you think? is carried through that's the same. Can you mean any specific things that are the same from one life to the next via reincarnation? In other words, in my life, what part of my soul will retain aspects of self from this life? Quentin Dick. Uh, God is, is that with which you engage via prayer in a faith behavior. Okay, so that is the correct definition of God. God is that which you engage via faith in prayer as a behavior. In other words, God's what you pray to via faith. The engine of prayer is faith because um, if you have any evidence of, to believe in God or good deductive reasoning to believe in it, then that's not God you're praying to. Because God is it defined as that which requires faith to engage. Faith is the absence of evidence, or belief in the absence of evidence, or in the face of contrary evidence. Declan Oakley, unfortunately, I am fresh out of the MT. Maybe not fresh out, but rather long out, you know. You can pray to a dirty band-aid by a faith, by a faith. No, you can't pray to a dirty band-aid by a faith because you have empirical evidence in front of you that the dirty band-aid exists. It's a physical object, so you, you can't have faith that it exists. It, you have sensory data empirics to establish that it exists. Hey, listen to me. God put you here for a reason. He supported you. He didn't. He wouldn't be here. Well, thanks, Teresa Carrillo. 
I like to think that one reason God put me here is to correct other people about their silly notions regarding gods. You don't have empirical evidence to be able to hear your prayers. That's a matter of faith. Well, um, I don't think that that's enough faith. I think you need to not even have evidence that it exists at all, let alone that it can hear you. I think it requires too little a leap of faith to believe that something that's extant might hear you. You need to have no evidence even that it exists at all. Stand tall and proud. Okay, I will stand tall and proud. I'll stand tall and proud and, and go outside and have a health tube. How about that? Maybe we'll go to the garage and have a health tube. Oh my God, Capillo is so adorable right now. Yeah, but I can't pray to that, Jay. It's equally a leap of faith, but I can't pray to that one. You see? See the difference? What an adorable kitty. Oh, my God. They're bad and good in this world for a reason. Well, I mean, it's because people make moral calculations and draw those distinctions. That's why those distinctions exist in the world. Um, there's some, some moral understandings that universalize and that we can use to inform us about what everyone's obligations are, including our own. Uh, other matters don't, uh, don't universalize. Do I think I'm perfect? No. I don't understand how that's relevant to what you're talking about here. Look, but even if we agree that somehow we must deductively conclude that the Big Bang came from something, simply you defining that thing as God is not establishing anything. It's just a circular reasoning game you're playing with words there. It's not, you're not doing anything intellectually. It's not an explanation of any sort. It's just, uh, it's just begging the question. The question being, where does everything come from? Your answer is a creator. And so what makes it begging the question is, when asked like, well, how do you establish the creator? You say, well, or nothing came from nothing, right? So obviously whatever came before the thing is the creator. Well, that's just, you're just begging the question. It's a fallacy. And kind of a ham-fisted one at that. You don't want to argue like that, but you're not doing anything. And you're, you're, you're like forgiving yourself for, for bad arguments because they favor what you want to affirm. It's just, this, you can't you're never going to accomplish anything intellectually that way okay what you want you, you can't have a preconceived notion about <clears throat> well here's the correct conclusion i just need to find the best arguments to support that no you need to determine the actual best arguments what things sustain what don't and then determine what conclusion to have accordingly you're doing it backwards Anywho, I don't want to argue about this stuff. I've had this argument with people plenty of times. <laughs> One of the frustrating things in life is this. There are certain questions that are open to interpretation still, still have room for discussion, need to be discursively explored in order to hammer out all the specifics. Typology is still one of those things. It's not fully explicated. There needs to be more intellectual work done, done in the field. There needs to be more empirical work done in the field, etc. But uh, questions like, questions about God, I've already articulated many times 
the one clear, correct position on all of these things. And um, people still think it's like open to for discussion or something. It's, it's not open for discussion. My arguments are determinate. They resolve all these disputes. They make clear that faith is a behavior, not a an argument, right? And that it's, it's a behavior predicated on the absence of such arguments. So the idea that you could jog better by not jogging is crazy. Oh, uh, I could do, I could jog better by instead of jogging, proving that jogging is good for you. <laughs> You're doing it wrong. That's not how you jog. That's the right analogy for it, right? You're saying like, look, you keep talking about jogging, but I'm saying I'm proving that jogging is good. Well, jogging is not good or bad. It depends on the person, depends on the circumstances, depends on what they're trying to become. It depends on infinite, varying, particular shit. Jogging, not good. And proving jogging is good is not a good way to jog. Jogging is also not bad, right? It's a category error. Jogging is a behavior that people engage in for their own reasons. Whether or not it's good or bad depends on what their reasons are and their own criteria for quality. Like, you know, am I glad I went jogging? They have their own criteria for that. Whether or not it meets those criteria, that's going to determine whether it's good or bad. Regardless, it's one of those things that they can determine as they experience these things and everybody necessarily will. To pretend as though you can drive some universal conclusion that jogging is always good, jogging is always bad, or whatever else, is to misunderstand both the purpose and nature of jogging. To then additionally say, I'm going to prove this before I go jogging, that way I'm a better jogger, you're not even jogging at all. How could you possibly be a better jogger? You're just writing papers about how jogging's good. So I hate it when people want to pretend as though an issue is still open for discussion when I, it's definitively resolved. I can tell everybody which things are definitively resolved, which things still need further discursive parsing and stuff. I can tell you exactly why, I can tell you what the correct positions are, why there's correct positions, what would be necessary to dislodge those positions and replace them with better positions, what those better positions would have to establish in order to replace them, in other words. I can tell you all of that stuff, but instead of listening to me, people just think that they, they're going to say something this time that somehow I've not heard before in my million times arguing this stupid topic. I hate this topic. Religion. You know, God's existence. It's such a dumb thing to argue about. Arguing about God's existence is like dancing about architecture. So, pointless an endeavor that it fundamentally boggles the mind that someone would even conceive of doing it. Whatever information you want to communicate about architecture, that's the worst conceivable way to communicate it. Let's say you need to tell somebody about a change on a blueprint. You do not want to tell them that by doing an interpretive dance. Similarly, you are never going to have any kind of healthy relationship with your spirituality if you're trying to use logic to prove what you are definitionally required to have faith in. Um. 
not to mention you're mistaking logical justifications for a behavior. You don't go jogging by writing about how jogging is good. And you don't have a relationship by God by trying to prove his existence. Even worse, you don't, you know, duplicitously co-opt cosmological origin questions and pretend as though that in that way you can backdoor your way into proving God. It's ridiculous. It's the same fundamental lack of argument, appeal to ignorance. It bears no scrutiny. It's absurd. It's wrong. And God hates it. So, I hope all that's clear for everybody. God hates it when people are like, Oh, I can prove your existence. Just, God's like, shut the fuck up. Leave me alone. I prove my own existence. I don't need your help. What are you doing? This isn't, this isn't how you have a relationship with me. What am I? A P or a Q or a statement connective? No. I'm fucking God, God damn it. You're supposed to believe with, believe me with your faith bones. Not your dumb symbolic reasoning. I don't need your stinking symbolic reasoning. I'm going to put a plague of frogs in your pants. Because that's what you deserve. And then, he'll put a plague of frogs in your pants. So, that's what you want. When you do that, go ahead, do that word. But if you ask me, I'd try not to anger God. Don't try to prove the existence and don't jeer at somebody. Get out of here, Baldy. Get out of here, Baldy. I mean, I. Whether or not there are religions that don't have creator gods is not informative on this question at all, Jay. People don't have souls, says N. All right, cool. Does the car have a voice? My car doesn't. Some cars do. Some cars say, like, please put on your seatbelt. My car just says, uh, beep, beep, beep. I've been manipulated. Who who's manipulated me? Oh. I see. Fine, rookie cookie. Thank you for correcting me. Jay, I'm sorry I was I was not up to date with what was going on and I misinterpreted things. It's a cute, cute great car. Cute gray car. Yeah, he's a good cat. I mean he's not a good cat, he's a terrible cat, but I love him. Yes, I do. I love my kitty. But he's really a dick. He's mean to his sister. He's bossy. He has some sort of superpower that forces me to watch him eat, even when I don't want to, and I think I'm not going to. I suddenly find myself watching him eat again. He's really a difficult cat. God manipulated me? Why did God manip what did he manipulate me to do? You know, I see what's going on, so I'm sorry. I didn't give you any more food. All right, so I have a, uh, I have another question. If God manipulated me, great, but did he also gaslight me? I was concentrating. Yeah. Did, did God gaslight me? Is that how he manipulated me? Or in some other way? I am 52. And I am Natasha Godfrey Ashford. So, did he gaslight me? Is that how he manipulated me? Why would an actual creator actually be correctly defined by a religion? I don't know. Crazy Cat says, hey, hey, peace. And says, great. Natasha Godfrey Ashford says, hello, Eric, how are you? 
I am fine. Maybe better than fine. I'm fine at the worst. I mean, my life's not pain. I've had painful periods in my life, but primarily my life is pretty happy. Not not full of pain anyway. Is that what God be like? If I don't believe in you, I'm going to hell? Well, eh, okay, well, do I live in an apartment? No, I live in a house. My cats are now going outside. Of course, Trevor wants to go outside to harass his poor sister. Be nice, dick. The imperfection of language means all descriptions of God are insufficient. Right. And accordingly, since we're dealing with something you can't meaningfully define without purporting to co-opt God beneath the purview of human parsing, um, any attempt to argue in favor of his existence or not, is ignoring the work that needs to be done in the framework first, which is definitional or groundwork. So... <laughs> you make an excellent point, man. Absolutely correct. Bravo for you. Here's one of these for you. Good job. Okay, well, that's what. That's why I'm saying they're not separate arguments, okay? Okay? That's why they're not separate arguments, because you're trying to backdoor into one argument with the other. I gotta get my meows. Wait, do I have my meows? No. Yes, I do have my meows. Um, lots of advice I give the younger generation. There's not a ton of advice in general in life that generalizes to everybody, right? There's a few pieces of advice that generalize. So I'm asked this question fairly often, and I have a few different approaches to it. Like one piece of advice that generalizes, one kind of advice that generalizes is to pretty much everybody. It's stuff like be kind, you know, basic stuff like that. But um, a, a kind of advice that probably generalizes to most young people, probably good for everybody as well, is generally try to preserve potential agency whatever for your older self you will be there soon enough you want your older self to be empowered not disempowered by the choices you make now so think about that and then the third thing is some really pieces of like basic practical advice like i say poop when you can if you don't it'll go back up inside you don't know how long it's going to be till you're ready to go again anytime you can poop go poop then I think this may be the best piece of all of the advices. I have a big house. Yes, I have a big house. It's not huge, but, you know, technically it's a three-bedroom. Really, it's a four-bedroom, two-and-a-half bath. Don't sit on the toilet too long. Because you'll poop out your soul. Again, if you're defining I as the soul, then we've just proved that people have a soul. After all, people have a self-concept. That's not how you argue things, Jay. Okay. They're just, <laughs> just plain circular definitional nonsense. What if I feel good when I am bad? Um, well... You'll need to make a determination as to whether you're actually bad or whether the thing that you're doing that makes you feel good, you've internalized that it's bad, but it really isn't. If what you're doing is actually bad, then you need to uh, desist in wrongdoings because of a basic moral imperative, regardless of how it makes you feel. If what you're doing isn't actually bad, 
um, then you should, uh, you should re, you know, revisit the question of what comprises bad and good, you know. Do gay men sit and pee? I have no idea. I sit and pee. I'm not gay. But that doesn't inform us at all regarding the question, so. I would imagine that, uh, like all men, um, okay, well, the thing is, you need a definition that's operationalized so that people on both sides of the issue can utilize it to draw meaningful distinctions between things. You're simply trying to define the soul as, as, uh, You're trying to define soul in a way that makes it extant no matter what. So that's not a definition that does any work. It's not drawing distinctions that are meaningful, etc. But I don't want to explain all the argumentational burdens to you. It's just too much of a hassle. We are here as a memory. This is not the real actual life. Uh, and you analyze under a microscope and test every prescription a doctor gives you, or do you believe what the doctor without analyzing what he gives you and making sure he doesn't lie to you? I mean, I don't trust doctors at all, but. You can be dead and still thinking you're alive. Do you think I'm dead and still thinking I'm alive? I would think a soul would require a language to express and define itself kind of similar to how the word is described in Christianity. Well, I mean, I think a more operational definition of soul would be something like an element of self that persists uh, separated from, from the biological self. In other words, that persists after the biological self has died. Um... What could that be exactly? What would it be made of? You know, what in what way would it retain retain elements of the self or something else? Eh, who knows? But at least then you're actually trying to define soul as people use the term. Right? People don't use the term as soul means I. I mean, soul is a part of the self that persists after the biological part is dead. And that's how people actually use the term, you know. So if if you want to answer the question in terms of how people actually use the term, then that's how they use it. <sighs> well, I mean, if you want to understand the soul as something that, that exists after death as per Christianity, then that's what you mean by soul. Like, you need to understand, Jay, that argumentation that you're trying to do is actually not win any sort of argument, but sacrifice are all the core meaning of the word soul in order to, to purportedly accomplish something on some technical grounds argumentationally that you're never going to accomplish because the soul you want to prove is not the soul you're proving. I mean, I, I don't think there can be a soul if we try to understand things through a determinist frame, because if, I mean, and there's no good way to affirm determinism, but if we were to understand it through that frame, then um, there is no self, really, it's just uh, a 
inevitable sequence of stimuli responses uh, and an illusion of of identity, you know? So there's no real way to understand the soul through a determinist framework. I think it's fair to say that a soul presupposes free will. Has anyone ever seen a ghost or another creature like that? I've never seen a ghost. Okay, don't don't spam it, Richard Hawley, for fuck's sake. Okay, look, no good comes from spamming. We get the message, I'll read it out loud, except now I'm not going to be able to because I'm going to have to time you out and it's going to make all your shit go away. All right, I'll leave it no more. All right, Richard Holly. Now he says, Ezekiel 18.4, Behold, all souls are mine, the soul of the Father, as well as the soul of the Son, is mine, the soul who sins shall die. All right, well, there you have it. But can you choose to act against your impulses? Well, so regarding the uh, determinism question, uh, the answer is pretty straightforward. In the status quo, we have what we perceive to be free will, okay? And we know that we can consider things conditionally, consider possible options conditionally. We know that we can experience life as expressed through varying degrees of free will. In other words, some things we do because we feel we have to, some things we do because we want to, right? And we additionally know that no matter what, free will can't require us to go back and forth in time. So we are trying to determine whether we have free will in the status quo, in which time moves in one direction. If we don't, then for that to be meaningful at all, it has to be possible to conceive of a universe in which people do have free will in the status quo where time moves in, in one direction. Otherwise, we're not making a meaningful distinction. So then the burden is on the determinists to describe a world different from our own, but one in which time moves in one direction, the, in which people actually do have free will, because otherwise we're going to default to the status quo, um, which observationally so, that people appear to make choices between things, they are capable of deliberation, and we behave as though they are responsible for their decision making in all of our legal apparatuses and stuff, right? So the burden is on the determinist to describe a world that meets the criteria of the status quo, namely time moves in one direction, but in which people do have free will, how would it be different than our status quo world now? Because as far as we can tell, by all the tests we can do as to whether we do have free will, the status quo meets those tests. We can consider multiple options, etc. <coughs> so that's the answer to determinism, okay? Because determinism can't produce that, alternate universe in which time moves forward and we do have free will and how it's different than this one, then we, the, the winning argument is always against determinism. So, so it's like things like this, there, there is a clear and decide, determinate answer on it and I just articulated it. But people like to go back and forth about it as though it's not been answered. <laughs> because free will doesn't mean omnipotence. Just because you have free will doesn't mean everything you will shall be freely attained. And just because you have free will doesn't mean you have a lot of freedom or liberty. So, like here in America, everybody has a good amount of liberty. Not, but everybody has different amounts of freedom because freedom is basically empowered liberty. I have the liberty to go 
buy a $10 million painting. I don't have the freedom to do so because I can't afford it. I don't have enough money for that. You are old. Yes, I does. I am old, apparently. I'm 52. Which is all he did to the making sense. Um, how could God have predestined a life without having included the sin that I'm supposedly responsible for? You're just creating a contradiction there. I've been watching your stream off and on, and you seem like a sensible and intelligent guy. I'm starting my first job on Monday, been very anxious about it. Any advice for this 19 year old? Uh, you know, I'll say the same thing I said earlier in the stream. I've been asked this question a couple times, actually, this stream even, but try to preserve your agency for your older self. Don't make decisions now that disempower you later. You're going to want to be empowered later, not just now. So try to uh, err on the side of caution, prudence. You don't want to get injured and have to deal with it for the rest of your life. Stuff like that, you know. You don't want to get arrested and have to deal with that for God knows how long. Avoid shit like that at all costs. So let's say there's a mother gives birth to a baby in Gaza now in 2024. What free will did the mother and the baby have? I don't think you understand what free will means. Free will is the opposite to determinism. In other words, it says, determinism says whatever you choose, it was actually inevitable that you chose it because you are just a mechanistic response to stimuli. Um, it doesn't mean that somehow you get to choose your circumstances or that things are fair or anything like that. It just means that um, you're, uh, all of your choices aren't predetermined. So even in the Gaza Strip, maybe um, it doesn't matter, but the mother might choose to go left or go right on a given street corner. That's the kind of example of something that's free will, you know? That, in fact, that choice is an actual choice is not predetermined by circumstances. And a series of um, over-causality situations. Like, well, we can't explain exactly what causes mea to mea, but we can attribute it nevertheless and be doing something somehow to a whole bunch of different causes, none of which we can exactly articulate. Well, that's not how you argue for things anyway. That's silly. You're not old, you just look old, which is kind of odd. I mean, I'm 52. I may look older than 52. I think I do, but uh, we are a slave to sin by nature. I mean, we are all capable of sinning, that's for sure. But it's incorrect to say that we are slaves to sin. Um, just because everybody sins sometimes doesn't mean that we can't successfully behave in righteous ways. We can't, we, I think all of us sustain a righteous path some of the time or for some stretches of time without sinning. It's not like everybody's constantly sinning. Um, if the choices you are allowed are finite and predetermined by the initial conditions, why are free will and determinism mutually exclusive? Well, because Predetermined means the choice, any choice making is illusory. Free, and if it's illusory, then people ought not be held culpable for their choices, right? In other words, it's not possible for you to commit a crime if it's predetermined that you were unavoidably going to do so. Accordingly, free will um, kind of concretizes along the lines of culpability. Hi, Zuyash Maril Gayankar. Hi. Edith B says he had a lung infection, doesn't have much time. Well, I'm sorry to hear that. Who are you talking about? Uh, 
your grandpa. Dear God, please help edits for you, grandpa. He's in the hospital. Uh, and do what you can. Amen. So, N says sin doesn't exist. Well, whatever you want to call it, okay? Uh, you don't have to call it sin. You could simply call it uh, failing to uphold universal moral duties. So, in other words, violating the rights of another is a sin. Like stealing from them, killing them. Um, failing to uphold your 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 duty in a relationship in other words failing to uphold fidelity in a relationship you're violating your contractual obligation if you want to just think about it in a non sin way so it's it's wicked wrong moral what immoral whatever you want to call it it doesn't have to be the term sin i mean that's that's implicitly contradictory, right? You can't predetermine multiple outcomes because if the outcome's predetermined, then um, it's one and not the other, right? Sure, there may be more than one outcome that's predetermined, but if in fact each of the outcomes is predetermined, then we can't say that anybody can be culpable for any choices. D for not Z, how are you? I'm doing well, thank you. I don't look for anything in a man, Pope of Dope. I am married to my woman wife. Why do people keep asking me this shit? Um, so the fact to be people think is a soul flaw. I mean, people have different positions on it, right? You can predetermine an outcome for those who choose to be in a certain group and predetermine an outcome for those who choose to be in a different group. Who's doing the predetermining? The idea of determinism is that implicit to existence is a reality in which all of our actions are inevitable because we are stimuli response machines that ultimately had no choice but to do anything but what we did. Soul is just a word, as are is just a and word. The devil, the devil lives on, coward. Am I coward? Uh, okay, the devil lives on. I'm not sure where the cowardice comes in. Uh, I know that you, you mean something by that. Acts chapter 2, you know, Jesus said he was predestined to be crucified. Okay, well, does that mean I was predestined to time out Suyash Marla Gay and Carr? That's what we're really asking. You don't believe a truly random event could be designed? I, I don't... I, I mean, look. I'm not saying that I can't conceive of a universe, the architecture of which allowed divine intervention in various circumstances, influencing outcomes, etc. That doesn't preclude free will either. It just means that uh, an externality forces determinism on certain specific things within the universe. But, you know, in that case, then the determinism, I mean, the free will would be shifted up a level so that it's God ex ex exercising free will to prevent the free will of people from operating. That's conceivable, but the point is, if God did that all the time with everybody, then 
then that would that would be that would prove determinism. However, that's not a way to prove determinism because is you still need to establish you still need to beat the burden I've already articulated that if you want to establish that things are predetermined and that there's no real free will or choice that people have. You'd need to establish how the universe would look different in a status quo where we had time moving forward in just one direction as we do now, but we did have free will. How would it differ from our status quo reality in which we don't? What would look how what would look different? Since determinists can't do that, then they're not doing anything argumentationally. Okay. So, she says, everything that will ever happen has been predetermined by everything that has already happened down to the molecular interaction. So, we, we know, for example, with the internet, we know with computers and stuff, that it's possible for us to construct mechanisms of randomization. Um, so, we're, we are able, in practice, at least, to distinguish between things that were scripted, predetermined, things that happened organically, authentically on their own, um, things that were intentionally done to provide randomization, etc. So we can distinguish between different levels of determination within the scope of our experience, right? In other words, we if and we can if we look more broadly at this question, we can determine myriad examples of stuff that's suggestive of consistent with the idea that we make real choices and that we could have in theory chosen otherwise <laughs> so the burden becomes increasingly substantial and difficult to meet by the determinists because again they need to describe a universe in which free will did exist it was different from this one and this one meets a lot of the criteria for free will, right? So. The point about randomization is that we can distinguish between things that are predetermined and not within our experience, right? That doesn't mean, that's not proof that, um, that we have free will. I'm just saying that we can find that level of distinction sort of on another another framework level in our experience is consistent with the idea that free will is possible and that we have multiple ways of engaging it, etc. Right? We've got lots of other elements that are consistent like that. They're not determinant on the question, but the burdens on determinism to explain why the status quo is something other than what it looks like. I think people confuse free will. We have a choice to eat Burger King or McDonald's, but free will as far as sin, we are slaves to the flesh. I mean, I'm not slaves to the flesh. Like, I'm not ever going to sin by cheating on Rachel or something. It's ridiculous. It's insane. No, randomness doesn't mean free will, greater delights. What I'm saying is that on the issue, on the question of whether something is predetermined or not, if I have a dice that's got six on every square on it, right? Because let's say I'm making a movie and I want the dice to turn up a six. And you show them rolling and I want it to be a six. Maybe the dice is weighted, so it's, it's determined ahead of time to be a six, okay? My point is we can distinguish between randomized outcomes and predetermined outcomes through our things like dice okay so we can make the distinction on the experiential plane we know there's a difference between cheating and making it come up a six and it actually randomly coming up a six so it's relevant to the conversation then because it's not just us who are purportedly predetermined in our choice making, it's everything that happens that's purportedly predetermined. But as with the dice, we can demonstrate how 
um, how by applying our will and behavior that does stuff or whatever, that we can create a predetermined outcome that's predetermined by us. And that we can not do that too. We can do the alternative to that. So all I'm showing, saying is that we have other areas where we can draw the same kind of distinction. It's consistent with the idea that uh, we can draw that, that distinction in terms of our own choice making as well. No, and I'm, I'm, I definitely know exactly what I'm talking about. And you have zero business, uh, even conceiving that I don't, right? So the arguments I've made are the correct arguments, the best arguments, and ones that have been refined over years. I am a professional competition debate coach, an expert in case making, case defending, framework, case level arguments, criteria, you know, ground, et cetera, all the stuff that you don't even know what I'm talking about, and yet purport to understand the subject better when you don't even know how to use language to determine things, right? It's discursive work is a specific kind of endeavor that requires you to adhere to a rigorous understanding of the mechanics of it, you know. There's not something for just anybody to play around with and expect that they're going to accomplish anything. No, because determinism is, is as, as used as a term of art, as a philosophy term, means the negation of free will. It, it, it is expressly that any choice making we appear to do is illusory, et cetera. So there, there's, it's like, unless you want to equivocate on the term determinism, it's not possible to have both. Good night, Richard Hawley. No one likes to be woken up. I would also growl. N says, you don't have strong arguments. Okay, N. Well, fortunately, I uh, am very confident that it's like a blind person telling me this painting has no red in it. Even if they're right, they have no way of knowing. So <laughs> what do I care? You're not right, but <laughs> even if you had been right, it's meaningless because you're just, you're just throwing random shit out, hoping maybe it means something, you know? Which is not such a terrible strategy, I suppose. Can I see auras? Uh, sure. What, whose aura are you only look at? So, your color aura. I'm getting a greenish blue, kind of a turquoise ish color. Turquoise. Boom. You're still turquoise. Acacia. Ah, I'm getting a kind of an orangish yellow with a little bit of beige mixed in. Bam. That's your soul. I used to have a dark past. No, I, I really didn't have a dark past. I. I have had three marriages, you know. Uh, I had a long career in education. I was a very successful competition debate coach. And uh, the last few years, took care of my aging, failing parents some and tried to be a good son. Then my dad killed himself. That was kind of dramatic, but not really all that dark. Because he was at the very end of his life. He was losing all of his faculties and stuff. And then my mom died and then we moved up here. Nothing particularly dark. Uh, my first marriage ended because my wife cheated on me. Second marriage ended because basically the only thing we had in common was raising my daughter. And... When she grew up to be 16 or 17, 
and we just didn't want to stay together anymore, you know. Uh, then I had a girlfriend before Rachel was a long, long-term girlfriend. She was BPD abusive. I had to break up with her. Now I'm with Rachel, third and final marriage. No, I didn't cheat on her. She cheated on me. As my daughter says, don't worry about it, Dad. She's cheating on everybody she's been with. <coughs> Boy, you're, uh, you sure, you should think a little bit more about maybe asking some questions before you start throwing out random accusations, you know? It's kind of irresponsible. Oh, no, I mean, everybody who knows me knows my story or anything like that. I uh, know for sure that Melinda cheated on me, not the other way around. I was shocked, you know. I came home one day and pushed the answering machine. And it's like, we had one, well, it was back in the day, right? So we had a answering machine that had a cassette tape in it and a landline. Anyway, it was one of those deals where she had picked up the phone at like the last ring before the answering machine picked up. And then the answering machine recorded her conversation with this guy. I came home, light was blinking, it was play, listened to it. It was indisputable what was going on. So, oh, well, like my daughter said, and uh, don't worry about it, Dad. She's cheated on everyone she's ever been with. The reason is she's a serial cheater. She kind of a toxic person. I didn't do a great job of choosing my partners. Uh, you know, she was damaged and turned out to be apparently a serial cheater. Uh, Kimberly, the girlfriend I had before Rachel, she was BPD and was rather abusive. Candace was fine. You know, she and I had a long, that was my longest relationship. We were together for like 13 years. We were married like seven. And uh, neither of us was toxic in any way. We did the best we could, but it just didn't work out. Had a shelf life, you know? Well, and you're really, uh, you're really grasping at straws, you know? It's okay for you to, you know, step back. Maybe you feel like you took a dowel tonight. And that's not a bad thing, necessarily. Sometimes it's it's great, helpful, informative to take an owl. What never helps is when we try to... try to pretend that we haven't, or try to change... change reality with... Uh, kind of mindlessly provocative stuff, you know? I like that. No, actually, I don't drink at all. I haven't drank for 10 years. Over 10 years. I quit drinking uh, a little over a decade ago on uh, the day after Christmas. So, yeah, I did used to be a, a drunk, but like I said, and you're grasping at straws and you have a preferable alternative. You can actually find out more about me, right? You could watch my some, some of my myriad videos, look at the channel do a little research. Asking me if I have a drinking problem, that's a good approach. That's a good strategy. You know, you're, at least you're asking the question, right? <sighs> 0 0.0 percent alcohol. So, you know, it's like, uh, just accept the fact, I, I don't know why people have so much difficulty accepting this, accept the fact that I'm just a perfectly nice, regular guy living a perfectly normal life who likes to live stream a lot and happens to be very correct about a bunch of stuff. I'm, there's nothing shady or sus about me at all. I'm like the most transparent person on YouTube. I don't hide anything about my life. Everybody gets to see exactly what I got going on every day, all day, pretty much. 
But, but people still want to come in and try to create create stories about me somehow being sus. It's like, you got no footing for this kind of argument because I spent the last decade living my entire life transparently on YouTube. Anybody who's familiar with my work production knows absolutely everything there is to know about me that could possibly be used against me, you know. I don't have any secrets. Secrets are how you get yourself to be vulnerable. People can exploit secrets, right? Whatever it is that you've done bad or whatever, by getting out in front of it, being very forthright about it and everything, you make it impossible for people to weaponize it against you. So, like, that's who I am, you know? You'd be well served to, uh, if you want to get somebody, to find somebody who actually has a lot of vulnerabilities because maybe they keep secrets or they're lying or whatever. I'm not, I'm not that guy. People get mad when I'm correcting about shit. They should take notes. And there's no reason why they have to cling to their wrong argument. They can replace it with my better argument at any moment with no harm to them whatsoever. You know, I'm not into whose argument it is. I'll take whatever the best argument available is. Well, thanks a lot, Idashi. I greatly appreciate your generosity. What a swell gesture. All right, and see you later. You know, think about what I said. There are lots of growth opportunities in life. When we're, when we're feeling up to it and and choose to embrace those. We're always well served. We're not always feeling up to it. I get that. Well, no, nobody's going to say that. And obviously, nobody wants to be. Uh... <laughs> Nobody wants that at all. That's ridiculous. If we, if, if we want to demand some sort of something from anybody just in order to have you stay, then, then obviously leave. Nobody else is that kind of guy. Hi, Simple Girl 357. Thanks a lot. I appreciate it. Hi, Paulina. I may be a cutie patootie, but I'm also married happily. <laughs> Just for the record. Who is the new villain? There's not any villain, okay? There's just people who are being stubborn or not. Stubborn people don't like me to correct them. Even though what I'm saying is a perfectly satisfying, determined answer on whatever question they're meowing back and forth about. But you know, this is not, this is not new for me. I, I've been dealing with this the entire time I've been on YouTube, been frustrated by it periodically. Other times I just take a stride, you know. People are very attached to their positions. And very few people, if any, I mean, I am, but not very many, are attached to the process of selecting the correct positions. 
You are a villain. Admit it, James Wolf says. I don't believe I'm a villain. That's fine. Now James is in the villain. Okay, well, villain is a necessary role. I, I vote for James. But because James accused me of being the villain, what could be more villainous than that? I used to be a competition speech and debate coach, primarily competition debate, flow debate, policy debate, Lincoln never was public forum. Um, now I am trying to get income properties up and running, but taking longer than I wish it would because of various slow down things like why can't the plumber fix the septic tank until the 9th of April? I don't know, but that's the date we have. We can't do anything else before we get the septic tank fixed, and we have to wait. So, you know, we need to get into the 2A community. Tons of great debates there. No, I don't like debating. I'm not interested in debating. Um, I am, and I admit it, but you don't because you're ashamed of yourself. No, I don't admit that I'm a villain because I'm not a villain. So it's not, if I were a villain, I would be ashamed of myself. And that would compel me to talk about it a lot, admit it a lot, because that's how I deal with things. The reason I don't have to be ashamed of myself is because I'm not a villain. I try to walk a righteous path and be a good person. Uh, you could even say I'm a moralist. Because, because the kind of debate that passes for debate online is not debate at all. They're, I, I'm not interested in in any kind of rhetorical exchange if it's not actually a competition debate round. I'd be happy to judge competition debate again. You know, I could do that in online tournaments and stuff. That's worth doing. But listening to people who don't have any kind of structure or who have no idea what they're doing go back and forth about some nonsense is just a waste of my time. So if I'm a villain in every life, so I'm happy this is a safe space. It tries to be a safe space. No, I'm not. I didn't say I wasn't a sinner. I'm not Jesus. I said I'm not a villain. I try to walk a righteous path. I occasionally make mistakes, but I haven't made any serious moral mistakes in quite a long time. Uh, have I ever tried fentanyl? No, never have. I'm not. I've never been into those kind of drugs like opiates, opioids, like. Vicodin, Oxycontin, heroin, whatever. They always, any, any bit of that would always make me yak and make me feel super sick. So I never got into those at all. I don't like them. VTSAX and sleep soundly. Well, I don't know what VTSAX and sleep soundly means, but I know what sleep soundly means, but I don't know what VTSAX means. Uh, not a ton. I have not researched. Islam a ton. My pronouns are it, they, and ourselves. So you did make them just not in a long time. Well, I mean, the thing is, I have had ser serious moral failings in my life, sure. I can think of multiple from childhood, of which I didn't have those horrible memories, like bullying somebody, cheating somebody. Uh... Like, I never cheated on a wife, but I, I have not ever, like, embezzled or done those kind of things. But um, there have been instances where I've been unkind. Uh, there was a time when I was 18 when I clipped someone's car driving drunk and drove away. Yeah. Um, well, I'm answering James's questions right now because he's trying to determine how or why it is that I can feel good about myself, uh, given the fact that I, like everybody else, is guilty of some, some moral failings. I, I told him what my pronouns were, it, they, and ourselves. And I answered the question of a dumb fan. No, the answer is no. I sometimes don't remember faces. What are my thoughts on Qantas? You mean the airline? <laughs> I don't have any thoughts on it. Regarding Islam, uh, sure, I am familiar with some things about it. 
Have I researched it extensively? No. Beast Boy is a curious fellow. Perhaps he is. Oh, you're saying he's stupid if you ask that question. I mean, not necessarily. I have tried shit tons of drugs. It wouldn't be shocking if I had tried that, no, but I have not and don't want to and won't, you know. She watched those two videos of some guy pointing a laser at UFOs and they interact with it. Oh, what are my thoughts on Hamas? I mean, it's a essentially a guerrilla fighting organization providing a military option to Palestinians. Yeah, you know, my position on Israel and Palestine is before Israel can hold any moral high ground and condemn and condemn uh, uh, condemn the Palestinians, they need to afford them their own autonomous state without any terms of stipulations, because that's the first in the order of questions. And unless that's resolved, then and until and unless they do that, they can't. We can't even um, really broach the topic of the moral failings of the Palestinians because you can't you can't hold people in an apartheid state and then claim some sort of moral high ground when they uh, use force of some sort to respond to the suppression. So if Israel wants to be able to say bomb Palestinians back in the Stone Ages, they need to afford them the opportunity to be their own state without any terms of stipulations for it. Once they're their own nation state, then attacks from Palestine comprise an attack by another nation state and all bets are off. You know, they can do whatever they want and it's perfectly legit. Are you the actor of Credos? No. Let's see what else is going on here in the chat. Any recommendations for books? on forming, presenting arguments correctly, or just any books in general on general philosophy. Uh, I don't really have any books about that. I do have a document that I can share when I go inside about, uh, which is called, which is just basically an outline that for, for a bunch of possible, like, it's basically an outline of all, of breakdown of argumentational stuff from debate. It's called, uh, Advanced argumentation for intelligent adults or something like that. I gotta find the document, but I'll share it with you. It tries to break it down probably too too lean. You'll probably find you have a lot of questions, but it's uh, not a terrible place to start. No, I mean we can agree that a given individual act is just it was unjust without um without ignoring the the order of questions, right? So it's like, it may be unjust, but it doesn't justify Israel doing anything, really, because until and unless they afford Palestinians their own autonomy, they can't really hold them responsible like they would hold autonomous people responsible. Combat sports are greater than both sports. I mean, it depends on the combat sport. I like to watch boxing, but I don't necessarily like to watch MMA because it just gets a little brutal, you know? Well, always sit on the toilet, Oliver. That's my advice to you. Thanks, Watt. Appreciate it. Okay. Your current predicament is precarious, but in future, just remain seated on the toilet at all times. Right, that's what I was suggesting as well. Uh, right now, you're probably not going to be able to uh, avoid standing up. AC-130 footage isn't brutal. Uh, I'm not sure what that means. Right. 
brand CAC. Jesus, we need to cook. I agree we do need to cook. Uh, I, should, I should cook something, I agree. I kind of have to pee. I need to clean the cat box. But I also want to have another health tube. I guess I'll have the health tube first. Let this phone charge a little bit longer because I've been... I've been wrestling with it running out of electricity all the time, you know, which I might try to move around. It's super annoying. Uh, hi, Harrison Sherwin. And S4 in the visit for in. Hello, Brazil. I am Eric. I'm from California of America. Yes, it's a Marlboro Red. The world's finest cigarette. However, YouTube doesn't want me smoking it on camera, so. You're not exactly wrong, Jay. But where I live is not like the rest of California, okay? I live in Mariposa County. This is actually a non-alcoholic beer, just to clarify. Uh, 0, 0.0 alcohol, you see. Yeah, the cities are bad in, in California. But uh, where I live is one of the best places in California you could possibly live. It's Mariposa County. It's a very low-density county. There's only county-level government, no municipal government. There's not a single stoplight in the whole county. Uh, it's very libertarian and a wonderful warm community no crime and no no graffiti no homeless encampments shit like that it's great up here now this is a non-alcoholic beer 0, 0.0 james walsh And uh, um, it is true that my body is a temple, but at my body's temple, my lungs take communion in the form of smoke. So there you go. God bless Texas and nowhere else. Thanks. And figure out how to become a member of the Super Chats. Uh, it's, it's on the video somewhere. Like at the bottom of the video. In the description of it. It should have a link to that or something like that. I'm not really sure. <laughs> you know. Uh, maybe. If like. Winston's mom were here or something. She would have the link for you. But. Um, I, I don't know. If you still feel like it later on, ask again tomorrow and we'll find a link for you. I appreciate the thought if you feel like it. If not, that's great. Fine too, you know. Okay. Again, brand cack 0, 0.0. This is no alcohol in it. Dumbass. Thanks, James Walsh. Um, blessings upon you and your family as well. Oh, you want your angry? Why? Brand was defending me? Was he? Okay. Well, then I'm the dumbass. I misunderstood that. My bad, my bad, Brand Cack. I'm the dumbass, not you. Okay, that's my bad. So I accept the title of dumbass. I retract it from you and put it onto myself, as I so richly deserve. Because I was wrong, and when I'm wrong, I deserve to shame myself for my failure. 
I never had a father. Do you have any advice for me? Um, I have a good life. I don't know. <laughs> you never had a father. What does that tell me? Love your mother more? We could take turns being the dumbass, but right now I'm the dumbass and I'm stuck with it until someone else has become the dumbass by, by earning the title. I was not an immaculate birth, but it was a live birth. So I'm pretty proud of that. Unlike a lot of people who were stillborn. Well, you know, dumbass is an equal opportunity employer. I'm just as susceptible as uh, getting hired by dumbass institution, dumbass industries as anybody. Bro, you think I'm kidding? Sorry for the bad English. I just found out you stream. No, I don't think you're kidding. I just don't know what possible advice I could, could have that would be, that would be like, shaped to the fact that you had no father oh i see maybe what you're saying is because you had no father you're looking to me as an older person to be to provide fatherly advice okay well i didn't interpret it that way um i mean the advice i typically try to give everybody is preserve your agency for your older self try not to make any big mistakes now that are gonna you're gonna regret for a long time don't Get some serious injury that you have to deal with for the rest of your life. Don't get married too young. Don't go to jail. Things like that. It's the best advice I could give. Um, but other advice I give is poop when you can. Don't hold it till later. You don't know how long. How, it'll go back up inside you. You don't know when it's going to come out again. So once again, I misinterpreted something. I do that sometimes. You know, I assumed that the, the not having a father was supposed to be relevant to the advice rather than relevant to why he sought advice from me. You see what I'm saying? That's where I made my mistake. I tend to assume things need to be relevant to, uh, to the matter at hand rather than, um, than the, the like, you know, reason why we're broaching the matter at hand. You married me when you were 17. Well, too late for that one, huh? So just make sure you try to navigate your divorce at around 30 as, as amicably as possible. That's my advice for you then. Can you hear a knock-knock joke? Sure. Knock-knock. Who's there? You tell me. Eric? That's the worst knock-knock joke I've ever heard. Somebody told me that knockback joke earlier. <laughs> yeah, that was pretty good. I write a song to young Eric with life advice. <sighs> I mean, I wouldn't want to mess with anything, right? Just one sensible piece of advice would be don't marry that horrible woman, you, your first wife. But she provided my child to me, so... I wouldn't want to mess with that, you know. I guess I would go back to childhood and tell my little child self, be kind to everybody. Defend people that others are being mean to. That's what I would tell my early young child self. Maybe I could tell that to myself at any age, really. You know, it's like whatever else I say or do, I mean, you know, however I approach things, whatever I say, blah, 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 blah. There are always some people who just, for whatever reason, just absolutely despise me. And who will, to the extent that they're here in the live stream, 
will exert all of their energy trying to attack me, trying to prove that I'm a bad person or other stuff like that, even though it's just factually false, you know? I'm not sure if they genuinely think, hey, this guy's hiding some secret badness or if they're just trying to generate that narrative as a means of harming me or something. It's, it's that I'm unclear about, but <clears throat> what I'm not unclear about is the fact that there are plenty of people in this world who just absolutely despise me for what I can tell, no reason, except maybe they think I'm pedantic. I mean, I, I know I hear that, like, you think you're always right, you think you know best, whatever. Well, I do think that. I don't think I'm always right, but I, I think that when I'm in disagreement with somebody else, almost every time, uh, I'm correct, and that's why I'm disagreeing with them. And 90% of the time, they're woefully unqualified to even begin thinking about the subject. They don't have any idea what they're doing. And that's just what I got to deal with. I guess that's, I guess what I'm saying is that's probably why people hate me. Is because I think I, <coughs> I think I know best. Like Kimberly said one time, you think you're the arbit, you think, you think you're the gauge of all knowing. That was a great expression. The gauge of all knowing. Okay, well, Kimberly, I mean, I wouldn't have to, I wouldn't have to know so much if you weren't so constantly wrong about everything. You know? Like, you're making it impossible for me to not correct you by constantly being wrong all the time. I need to eat something. I think I'm gonna make a little bit of food here. Well, go ahead and eat, Trouble. I'm right here, okay? I'm right here. You can eat. Yes, you can eat. It's like you're not close enough to the table. Trouble, listen to me. I don't need to be right on you for you to eat, okay? Just eat your fucking food. Ridiculous cat of mine. History's most ridiculous cat. I think I'm gonna make rice, you know? I mean, is Eric going to be sick of rice by now? No, I'm not. I, I, I like rice a lot. I'm gonna make it. Did Rachel empty the dishwasher? <laughs> If so, then I can put those dishes in the dishwasher. Alright. Let's turn on this light here as well. I'm going to put a little sippity soap on the snippity snoop here. Now, using this brush, we shall apply soap and scrubbing to this pot to remove any remnants of the previous rice that was made in it. Away, old rice. Away you go. We don't need your remnants, so we'll wash you in the sink like this and exchange your riciness for piss. Good enough. It doesn't need to be all spotless or whatever. And you get all the old rice bits and the soap out of here. You should be good to go. All right. Now, let's check in here and see if, in fact, Rachel emptied the dishwasher. She did. Wonderful. That means we can put the new dishes in here. Put these forks and these knives. Put the bowl here. Oh, that was 
put it right there is fine. Empty this bowl. Put this bowl right here. We got this glass. Just put this glass right here. What else do we have? Anything? No. Good. We're done with the dishes. In they go. So. Let me say we got a little counter cleaning to do here. You can see sink, or, you know, stove slash counter clean. It's got a lot of little crap on it. <coughs> so, <coughs> let's go ahead and get this trash can here. We've got to sweep, sweep, sweep. Sweep all of this. We follow that right like this. There we go. Sweet, 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 sweet. Okay, good. Next, we're gonna get this measuring cup, which we will use to measure the rice, which I left out. Measuring cup. Rice. Yeah. One full flat cup of rice. You don't want a heaping cup of rice. You want a flat cup of rice. Now we'll get the water. One cup. Yeah. Two cups. Yeah. And next, we're gonna wash our hands. Put a little soap. Rub it around. Rub it off. That's fine. Now that we've got our hands clean, we can do the next stage of the rice making, which is to gently jostle the rice. And gently jostle it with your fingers. To spread it around the bottom of the pot and to break up any clumps of rice. Okay. Fine. Wonderful. Spectacular. Exactly what we're looking for. Shake it around. Give it the shimmy shimmy shake. Now, we're going to start this fire as hot as we can. And we're going to put the timer on here. For six minutes. And then we're going to do something we needed to do for a long time, very badly, and we really are ready to do this. We're going to go pee. Okay. If you're afraid of that, if you think that's too much for you to handle, it's time for you to go to bed, little girl. Ah, <sighs> oh, yeah, I got the SI tingles. Welcome to the wonderful world of urine. 
a fully interactive experience. You are the urine. Ah. Well, that's better. It's good to empty the urine from your body. You know, uh, It may be frustrating and I have to go pee periodically. I may mean, think like I do. Maybe my body should use more of the liquid I put into it for hydrating me and less for making urine. But regardless, it's always a satisfying relief when you no longer are filled with the urine. Urine, it had previously been increasingly making a pressingly urgent case for action. Alright, I'm pulling up my overalls, which is a little more difficult than pants because of course overalls are overall, whereas pants are only over some. As you'd call pants over sons. Okay, we've got ourselves redressed. In the continental style. I dressed myself in the continental style today. There. Now I have successfully started the rice. That's going to require 20 minutes of cooking time before it's complete, of course. Once it is complete, I plan to do a little something extra to it. I'm going to fry it up with some soy sauce. Uh, in a culinary event, I like to call fried rice. <laughs> I may even put a little extra ingredient or two in there, depending on what I find. 
We'll find out. You wear them bibs when you're working out in the barn? I just got these. Just got these. Yeah, my urine is worth its weight in gold, but... Uh, I just flush it down the toilet anyway. It's 9 a.m. there. It's 1 a.m. here. So you're eight hours ahead of me. I showed you to my mom. She said, hi, I see you, but as an old guy. That's cool. Pimp J, I shall. I was just about to do that, in fact. But... <clears throat> it seems to me the one thing we should all agree on is that it's time. All right? It's time. I am 16, going on 17, bong hits, so stand in line. So to me, you don't have a strong stream, Eric. Oh, yeah, well, it depends. Like, uh, tonight I didn't because I am on a little extra Adderall. When I'm on Adderall, I have trouble relaxing my prostate, you know, um, other times that's a big deal, not such a big deal, it's also a phenomenon that's made worse when I'm constipated, which I'm not right now, but further it's made, it's made better if I massage my prostate, which I haven't in a while, I can do it myself, I can get up there in the shower if I position myself in a certain way, but it's obviously not my favorite uh, health and well-being maintenance regimen. So, you know. Yeah, you gotta do it as you get older, okay? It, uh, it does make a difference, and it'll improve your your pee stream and stuff for some stretch of time afterwards. But you got to do it periodically, you know. It's not something I want to do all the time. <laughs> okay. Yes, it is 0, 0.0, okay? I have not drank any alcohol in over 10 years. Well, that's one way to do it, Jay. Good night, JC. Good for me, says Video World. Thanks, Video World. <laughs> Thanks, Isaiah Rude. There is no God but hand. <coughs> okay, so... Why is and God, but not the conjunct, not the disjunction or? Why is the conjunction and God? <coughs> There's a reason why we're designed so we cannot see our own anus. Is it because to look at your own anus is to see into the eye of God? Oh, it's good, Isaiah. <coughs> it's nice to finally get a different strain than what I've a strain than what I've been smoking. <coughs> I need to get more buds from the freezer. These little budettes I have left are all gross and. It's dry and whatever. So I'll be right back.
<coughs> Is it me, Insta? I don't really use Instagram. Oh, you're saying Jay sends you Insta. It's called the gram, okay? That's how the kids call it. Hey, want to participate online via the gram? Jay trying to ghost. I don't have the gram, <coughs> says Jay. <coughs> 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 That's right, Jay. It's because the only social media platform that matters is YouTube. The gram can suck my dick. You have a horrible tooth infection. You couldn't get anyone to pull today. I'm sorry to hear that. That sucks ass. I remember when I was in China, I had a terrible cavity and. Like, in China, you can't even get Tylenol. I had to, you know, tough it out for a couple of days until I could see a Taiwanese dentist. <coughs> yeah, let's call him uh, S4, all right? S4. Sandy. Sandy's fine, too. <coughs> Clint's permission slip. What are your thoughts on eBay? It'll get you instantly banned around here. And the reason I feel no qualms about it at all is what I tell everybody who tries to pull that shit. I don't solicit money from you. So I don't, for example, ask people to super chat, recommend they join as channel members or anything like that. <coughs> <coughs> I don't even ask people to like and subscribe. So, if I'm not soliciting you at all, you don't need to solicit me. That's my position. I'm saying you're trying to. I'm just, I'm glad you asked the question. I think it's, uh, I think it's an interesting one. I think for, for YouTubers who do tell, <coughs> that last bomb rip really hit me bad. I just, that shitty dried out weed, you know. <coughs> this is better fresh from the freezer. I think for streamers who do solicit donations and stuff, it's hard for them to object to other people doing so in their chat, you know. But they probably object to it anyway. And just, they probably just, uh... <coughs> Hide them, don't say anything about it or whatever. Finally built a good sized abscess and it popped so it released some pressure. Well, that's better than, uh, than it being worse, you know. But I'm sure you can't wait to get to the dentist to get it fixed. That tooth pain is just horrible. I know it's horrible. Clearly, God did a poor job of designing our teeth. I think we can admit that. Probably just like, oh, yeah, it's going to be such a long time until they get sugar and stuff. Just fuck it. It's good enough. And now here we all are. Clint, don't say a, man, a word to my man, Eric. Clint could say things to me. Why wouldn't Clint be able to say things? Liked his question. You may be just humility and watching grown men post up pay links for strangers' charities. Embarrassing. Uh, I mean, it's not my style. 
I don't solicit money from people. I do have my channel monetized, which means people can see the chat if they want. I inform people up front. Becoming a channel member here doesn't really come with anything except some some stickers that you couldn't use otherwise in the chat. And, uh, and yeah, I don't even think I have a donate button, do I? I don't know, maybe there is one. I, I never think about it. I, I've streamed like this for a long ass time with no growth in the channel. And um, additionally, um, with just being a labor of love, you know, and I've written off the idea that it would be profitable a long time ago. Even when I had dreams of it being profitable, I still, I had trouble even remembering to say, don't forget to like and subscribe or please like and subscribe and so on. I just, it's just not my style. This isn't for that for me. It's not a business first. This is what I do with my time. I hang out with people. I, I don't, you know, it's like, uh, I, I want to be able to treat people around here as, you know, peers pleasant companions, associates, whatever, uh, friends to some extent, some of them certainly, and, you know, people stick around long enough and increasingly start to think of them as friends. I don't want to ask my friends for money. It's ridiculous. Oh, really? Does being a member give you access to certain videos that you can't get otherwise? I didn't even know that. Maybe it is. Eric, I've been amazingly correct with my typing. It's actually spreading. Anyone wants to type me, please contact me on Discord. Like, Eric, I'm only doing this for fun. Only I can live stream. You still can't live stream? What's going on with that? Kissing dudes is the manliest? Well, sure, because, like, if you kiss a girl, that's manly. Well, what could be more manly than that? Kiss a man, you know? Because they're like a girl times 10. Is that how it works? <laughs> Why can't we friend people on YouTube? This is Madness and Seven. You can, so I, I, I'm i like, Rachel and I are going to stay, spend a night with Luminex, who is a channel friend. I met Rachel on the channel, and she's now my wife. You know, I, uh, and Acacia has been to my house and, and Ruben has, and, you know, as I, people stick around for a while, a simple girl, I mean, obviously I feel, I feel a certain, uh, camaraderie with you as well. You've been super cool and I've heard some of your story and, you know, I feel like I'm starting to know you a bit as well. So, uh. So it's, it's absolutely the case that, that I have a first date and I have been friends for a long time. Actually, I've hung out with him in Kansas and stuff. Uh, so I, I mean, I have a lot of friends that I met through the channel, but, um, the point is even regardless of that, I just would not, I just, this is not my style to be like, come on guys, give me money. Like for what, Eric? <laughs> it's like, I'm doing what I feel like doing, making no accommodations in any way for the viewers. I'm not even doing work. I'm just hanging out and I'm lucky enough to have people willing to hang out with me. Why would I even dream of asking them for money? All right, Natasha, all right. Am I dilly-dallying? My bad. Okay, Natasha, okay. Jeez.
What is that all about? That was a good bomb rip. Okay, will you stop saying that, Rose? Did you fur? We already heard you say that. The testimony that there is no God but God and that Muhammad is the messenger of God. That is, I'm sure, your testimony, okay? Personally, I'm not of the mindset that Muhammad is a messenger of God. I think Muhammad was not telling the truth about all that stuff. I think he was just making the shit up himself. That's just my opinion. Rachel's in bed. I can hear the stream playing in there. I don't know if she's asleep. She likes to listen to... Um, YouTube, when she's falling asleep, she may have fallen asleep to it, or she may still be awake. If she is still awake, it's conceivable that she might chime in here in the chat. What kind of mess are we making? It doesn't seem like a mess in here right now. It seems uh, like a tidy and pleasant stream. Um... Believe me, I do. It sometimes it does get to be a mess in here, to our canyon, but it doesn't seem like that right now. Jay, Tom is the goat of goats. Who's Tom? So it says, I also never joined chat before today. Glad I did. I'm glad you did too, so thanks for being here. Okay, stop, spammy. Spammy Sammy. God, nobody wants to hear your dumbass testimony about Muhammad. <laughs> no, I have not tested first class. I have not. <sighs> triggering what? What are we triggering? Smatch. Riots and chaos. Riots and chaos? Oh no. Where are the riots and chaos? Are we having, are we experiencing them right now? Am I in the middle of a chaotic riot? I can't even tell. God is love. God is love. It's like, I'll let that fly once or twice, but you just keep putting it. I mean, come on. I'm sure. Muhammad, if you were to ask him, would not recommend you spam the chat as a good strategy to share his message. Best stand-up special ever? I don't know the answer to that question. That's what I'm wondering too, Bear Split 96. Am I in this riot right now? Is it chaotic? Am I at risk of possibly being looted from a store? Early in the morning, crazy folk could try. Talk about religion while we play and smoke some pie. <laughs> yeah, it makes it a heck of an early morning, right? Sandy, S4? What do you prefer, Sandy or S4? Jay says, ha 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 ha. I must say, at one stand up special, um, uh, I'm sure some girl you can talk to me. Um, you want to schedule a time? I can. You want to schedule a time? I can put it on my calendar and stuff. All right, now we got to let the rice rest, okay? You cannot rush rice right out of the pot into your service of it in whatever capacity. 
Um, you got to let it rest. There is another thing you must let rest, and that is steak after you cook it, before you cut it. I have seen plenty of George Carlin. I am not especially a fan of his. I am much more impressed, for example, in Steve Martin's stand-up comedy than I ever was in George Carlin's. And in terms of contemporary stand-up comics, I like, uh, what's your name? Edith Roblowski. I like Rachel Feinstein. I like Paul Mulaney. But yeah, I'm not especially impressed with George Garland, possibly because he's the same type as me. So he has the same, more or less, kind of attentional skills as I do, but uh, it just doesn't age very well. It doesn't age very well because he's got too much opinion going on, you know. Edith? Same vein? I don't think her name is Edith Same Vein. I think her name is like Edith Brock. Oh, Esther Pavitsky. Esther Pavitsky. I can, I always think Edith because it's basically the same as Esther, you know. I, I don't dislike Joe Rogan. I'm not, I'm not a consumer of his media. Waiting for a hangover while I hear a good guy saying good things while I talk shit with some dudes on the chat. It's a hell of a morning. Esther Pavitsky. Natasha Godfrey Ashford is a cat in a box. I don't know who Steffi is. I, I think Norm MacDonald's good. I think he has a number of good jokes. You know, I think his... His kind of... Affected delivery style. He managed that better as he got older. When he was younger, it was too overwrought with the you knows. Thanks, Video World, for your incredibly convincing chat. Everybody, are we all ready to become Muslims now? Everybody figure out what direction. Oh, there's Steffi. There is somebody named Steffi. I didn't know such a person existed in here. Um, it's time for us to become... It's time for us to become uh, Muslims. Mike Barachan, you sold your soul for an ounce of meth when you're 20. Does that mean that the devil was selling meth? The thing is, look, the point is, as we become Muslims, step one, figure out which direction Mecca is in. You can start by just directing your Christian prayers towards Mecca. Step two, regardless if you're a man or a woman, begin covering yourself from head to toe in a linen outfit of some sort, okay? Only your eyes should show, not even your fingertips. Step three, always wipe your ass with your left foot. Islam wants us to know how to wipe our butt. So it tells us. Meth is the devil. I see. Well, it is the case that lots of people kind of ruin their lives with meth. But, uh, you know, I was a meth addict for a while, and 
didn't really play out like that for me. <coughs> okay, all Muslims, let's go message. We're sin, let them be free. Thank you all. Bye bye. Bye, video world. We're all Muslim now. So you did your fine and noble work. You can you can go tell your friends that hey, I just converted a whole live stream all at once with my powerful rhetoric. Closest thing you have in Brazil to methamphetamine is crack. That's not close at all, okay? That's not even the same kind of thing at all. Cocaine's a bad drug. Amphetamines are a little bit more complicated in the equation, you know? It's not like it's a good idea to get addicted to amphetamines, but I'm just saying, you don't necessarily... People who do amphetamines, get addicted to them or whatever... And then kick them. When they're done kicking them, they're still their normal self. They're back to their normal self pre-amphetamines. In contrast, cocaine, if you get addicted to it for a while, and then you kick it, you always kind of seem like a cokehead forever. I don't know. That's just my observation. Pomona blows. I know Pomona well. Uh, Angel Cemental. I know Pomona well. Uh, in fact, on my channel, there's a video that is about the cops. I was filming the cops as they abused this poor guy and tased the shit out of him and then yada, yada, yada. There's this whole dramatic video you know do i believe in reptilians you mean like lizards and alligators and crocodiles and stuff yeah i also believe in amphibians mammals various kinds of animal marsupials what's up fools what's up fools tyrone banks i will tell you what's up fools not much Okay, that's the answer. You don't need to ask again. Here we have complexes called favelas, where some focus on cocaine, others crack, others on marijuana, others on weapons. I mean, marijuana is not remotely comparable to cocaine and crack. Weapons are a separate matter entirely. Do I believe in lizard people? No, I don't think so. Uh, like some sort of unholy hybrid between lizards and people? How did they come to be? Were they like have they always been around? Are they just they're a species that, are they like Sasquatches? They've just always existed but we just haven't definitively found them yet? Other chemicals are sold under the table. My cousin from P-Town just got locked up. Search it up. Fernando Alvalos, Las Vegas. Oh, I'm sorry to hear that. Never good to uh, find oneself in jail. Pinky Pinky, passionate military official. Hmm. You're a lizard person, Rev King. I can't take the time to think about the Yankee Pinky as they are. It's requiring me to sit in silence and think. I'm not saying that marijuana is like cocaine, but rather that there are branches that sell different drugs, and marijuana is treated as a drug. There's no legalization. Ah, right. Well, you should tell Brazil to legalize it. You tell them, uh, hey, 
it's fine. Let everybody smoke pot. Jay says the scholarship was awarded to a high school in Houston in the 80s for researching hybridization with lizards for immunity to most common human ailments. The weed has been tasting funny lately, as it only me who noticed. I've had the same weed for well over a year now, so... I've already smoked all the weed that I like the way it tasted, and I'm left down to the part that I don't like the way it tastes so much. You just saw, I just saw you mention Inky Pinky. When did I, Arden Sergeant? That doesn't really rhyme. That's an iffy rhyme, okay? I wish I could have come up with Arden, but that's an iffy rhyme at best. Well, I'm growing my own. I just started growing my own here, Angel. Uh, I've got six seeds that I'm trying to start. And um, hopefully they all germinate. It barely counts, Arden Sergeant. Well, you could grow your own ghetto plant. Then you know exactly what's on it should say nothing but the sunshine of the sky inky pinky a strong desire one who whacks buttocks hmm well spanker hanker hanker spanker Modern weed is designed to spike paranoia. Designed by whom? I mean, you've got myriad individuals, growers, doing their own breeding all the time. Because it's something people like to do. Of course, there is, a, unfortunately, in situations like California's, incentives for weed growers and breeders to try to hit as high as possible on the lab results in terms of THC content, you know? So, unfortunately, all the indica strains now are just super OG heavy. They're just headachey, make you kind of sleepy. They're not particularly good high. <laughs> this is nothing remotely at all the same as crack epidemic, okay? <laughs> the thing is, you need to remember something. Marijuana is a plant that you can grow from seeds. You can breed, you can not help but breed two separate strains together if you have a male show up in the mix. It will, it will pollinate it whether you want it to or not. You end up with a lot of seeds. And this is how all weed is dealt with, you know? It's true, this time I bought seeds, but um, I bought, I guess you'd call them heirloom strains. I got uh, Jack Herrera, Northern Lights. I grew Northern Lights back in college. Well, obviously, plants that are bred for specific reasons are not the same as plants that are not bred. But the notion that somehow, because weed, I mean, <laughs> you can get so many different kinds of weed. The idea that any specific thing is highlighted by some top-down, you know, agenda is just insane i can't even count how many different strains of weed are available at the weed store i think they're all engineered for paranoia why <laughs> who benefits from that are you sure you're not just getting paranoid when you smoke weed i don't experience paranoia no matter what strain of weed i get I mean, it's bred 
for the specific reason called getting you high, right? I don't know, dude. I mean, I think that doesn't make any sense. People grow and breed weed for one reason and one reason only. To try to get stony weed that gets you super high. That's what people look for when they breed weed. That's what almost every breeder in the world looks for. And there's no central agency telling people how they must breed weed with each other. It's ridiculous. It's insane. I'm not getting the fade. That's for sure. Myriad periods. Oh, so that was an inky pinky, I see. I didn't know what that meant. I didn't know what it, Acacia's answer meant. A skunk is mixing a bunch of chemicals inside a marijuana press. <laughs> I see. Well, that's not what my skunk is going to be. Um, uh, I'm growing super skunk and hopefully it's good. It's the, those are the free, that's the free seeds I got <coughs> because I ordered like four sets of four different strains or something. I got a bonus free 10 seeds of super skunk. That's just what they give you. You can get to choose between different free things, you know. So, uh, we'll see how it how it grows, how how it looks, how it smokes. You know, assuming it sprouts. I've had these seeds in the sprouting, yeah, for a few days now, and uh, a couple of days, and they haven't sprouted yet, but. I'm assuming they're just taking their time a little bit. That they will sprout soon enough. I suppose over my life I have. Over your life you have what? You have learned a lot of important lessons. You've grown so much as a person. You've become the woman you always dreamed of being. Over your life, you have what? You haven't? Oh, you've had myriad periods. Well, I mean, quite a few, sure, but enough to qualify as myriad? I don't know. I think you're pretty, you're setting kind of a low bar for myriad. Let me see, once a month for, let's say, 20 years. 12 times 20, 200. And... All right, you know what? That's myriad. I'm going to go ahead and grant you that. That's more periods than I was thinking. It's quite a few periods. Myriad periods. We might even call it a plethora of periods. Jay is ignoring you. Maybe he's left. Well, I'd never done the math before, so never done the math. Uh, I just realized now that actually, see you later, Sandy, that actually a woman has not only myriad periods, but potentially a plethora of periods. Uh, so I stand corrected. I'd underestimated the total quantity of periods. Now, we do have rice to cook. Before we come back in and cook a little bit of rice by frying it in the pan with a little bit of soy sauce, I think let's have a bit of a health soup, shall we? Let's do that. Let's experience the wintry wonders of outside, shall we? 
women got too many periods. Fly Guy says, Eric, your channel has crossed the event horizon. This is the TWFP singularity. I hope so, Fly Guy. I hope so. I hope so. I hope so. There are women around, yeah. Um, probably like most males on YouTube, I have more male viewers than female viewers. But I probably do better than most. It's probably about 60 40. Um, and that's not so bad. I like it to not be a sausage party. You know, nobody wants to attend a sausage party. Although, you know, the truth is, apparently in the olden days, men really enjoyed sausage parties. And that explains why they have all those things like the Lions Club and the Moose Lodge or whatever. You're like, we don't want any girls here. We want to hang out with no girls. Why? Why do you want to have your dumbass boring sausage party? If you can't get girls to hang out with, then why? What are we even doing here? Are we Greco Roman wrestling or what? I don't want to just stand around and talk about power tools or whatever you imagine is so wonderful about talking to dudes. Most, most of the time, I might as well prefer talking to chicks. They tend to be. Like, I happy to participate in some girl conversation about, like, relationships or celebrities more than I want to participate in a conversation about what kind of riding mower to get or something like that. I like sports, but even then... The kind of sports talk, the kind of talk that passes for sports talk among men sometimes is just numbingly banal. Now, of course, if you get somebody like that boy, Klaus, I really enjoy chatting sports with him. He's got good insights. He knows how to, you know... be cool about talking about sports. You know, so talk about it cool. Like me. Sometimes people want to talk about it, but they care about the wrong things. I have to be like, that's not how you talk about sports. You're just talking about people. Well, I didn't bring my glasses. Can I give advice? Of course, I love receiving advice. Please do. Advise me. Use your wisdoms to advise me. Let me think. Oh, I, have to get a, I have to get my glasses. I can't really read that. And leave them in their hole.
Well, let's see what this is. James says, I need relationship advice. Can I give advice to soap? I meant to James, but I'll give you advice too. Okay, cool. I advise you to always wish on a star, even if it's not moving. Maybe one day it will, and it will remember your wish. Well, that's nice advice. Oh. If she won't let you... If she won't let you snoop, then I think she's hiding something. People in a healthy relationship are open book to their partner, in my opinion. Other people might not agree with that, but that's how I see it. Answering your question, in England right now, it's cold in spring. Yeah, it's cold in spring here, too. Whoever told your dad not to drop soap is a good thing for you. Yeah, James has always worked hard as you or the phone. Yeah, I mean, and probably it'll be both because you might get the phone, but you're going to find what you fear, I suspect. Otherwise, she wouldn't be hiding shit. If your partner's hiding, it's not because they just prioritize privacy, it's because they're hiding shit. Is your dad coming back? I don't know if your dad's coming back or not. This is an excellent use for a metal dust pan. This is the, the ashtray that's stuck. After many possible versions of ashtrays. Yeah, that's very suspicious, James. Very suspicious. How am I supposed to pump in nibs and CODs or the gal on the mic? Just be like, sorry, bitch. I'm embracing my inner womanhood today, and woman, hear me roar. Just be like that, and you can be safe. By beating her, you're being you're being more of a woman than she is, and she can't object. I mean, what James is describing seems to me indisputably. <laughs> Obviously unacceptable behavior on the part of a significant other and she needs to make all of her email everything available for you to play detective with if you want. She shouldn't be hiding shit, whatever it is. Heidi Schmidies are up to no good. That's not an acceptable reason either, but Heidi Schmidies are up to no good. How do I power through the beginning stages of YouTube despite the lack of engagement initially? I mean, you got to, uh, you got to understand its purpose is something other than dealing with an audience. Like, I've been talking ideas out for years, so now if nobody were around, I'd run out of gas pretty quick. But uh, when I started, I had a lot of ideas I wanted to talk out, I need, needed to talk out, regardless if anybody heard them. And so uh, I understood it first as keeping, keeping a record of my my ideational stuff, uh, if I needed to reference it, but also just, um, it helped to sort of know 
Okay, this part of the idea has been talked out on this video. I don't really need to talk it out again. Or maybe I did, and I talked it out again on another video in a different way until I felt like I had enough, I had enough SI experience with it to understand it. I also like to re-watch my videos when I first started YouTube, and I never re-watch anything I make now. But I think it was very helpful for me to watch it. I think I learned a lot. I think it's a process is worth going through. So it's like whether or not anybody is engaging you, if you're talking out your ideas for your own purposes. Um, and in fact, when somebody does show up like in a live stream and engage with you, engage with them briefly and just say, hey, I'm talking out this idea kind of for my own purposes here. I'm happy to engage in another topic if you want to bring something up. But in the meantime, we're gonna just keep talking about this idea. And you don't feel this obligation to, you know, host a party or whatever. You're, you're not going to probably immediately be able to do what I'm able to do right now, which is just work off of sufficient amount of chat. Uh, but you might be able to, because if you start vertically live streaming, you are going to probably enjoy the same kind of, you know, periodic bursts of random eyes onto the channel that I'm enjoying right now. And who knows? I mean, you might just piao, piao, piao. Well, it's because you're not able to live stream yet. All right. Well, if, if what you're ultimately going to do is live stream a lot, then um, it doesn't really matter what happens in the interim as long as you manage to unlock live streaming. And then you'll address address the frustrations with that at that when that comes about, you know. Could you open a business with twenty k in the USA? I uh, it would have to be. I mean, you would you'd have to have some kind of weird space arrangement if it were part of physical space. Obviously, anybody could open up a business, shipping stuff out from their house or whatever, right? If you. You know, like my student Jeffrey designed some keyboards, like gaming keyboards. He had a 3D printer, he just had printed prototypes, had them milled in China, had the parts sent back to him in the United States, assembled them in his house, and shipped to match customers that way. He didn't need to have any kind of uh, storefront, right? If you're doing something that requires a storefront, then that would definitely not be enough. Hot dog stand. You could do a hot dog stand, probably. <coughs> Hands-on contracting business. Uh, contracting business, maybe. If you, but you first, you have to get a contractor's license. But if you did, then you could. You could run that for some stretch of time without an office space because most of your engagement with the customers are going to go to the site, right? And look at the property and talk to them about whatever work they want to have done. So you could probably get away without an office space for that. You have the contractor's license. Uh, maybe, you know, I, I don't know a lot of details about how contractors operate but it seems like um, like I'm not sure how much capital you need for example if you're to take on a job or are you gonna get paid some up front so that you can can uh, pay all of the expenses necessary that way or not I don't really know how a contract works so for me to say. I do know how frying rice works though. And I'm gonna fry some rice right now for the codification and enjoyment of the soul.
And tonight, I'm going to just do a straight and simple fried rice. I'm not going to have any... any ingredients in it except rice and soy sauce. That's it. Just rice and soy sauce. Usually I'll put some other ingredient in it besides those two things. But not tonight, damn it. Just rice and soy sauce. And that's it. to this helpful rice scooper, the removal of the rice from the pot is substantially easier than it would otherwise be with any other cooking employer. Because that rice scooper is specially designed to guess what? Scoop rice. You're right. You guessed right. Why they call it a rice scooper. I don't know if they call it that, but that's what I call it. And that's what matters. Now, the frying of rice. Let's discuss how it's done. First, we're going to put a little soy sauce. Oh, sure, we're going to put a lot more at some point. First, we're going to put a little soy sauce on. Like that much. It's not a tiny amount, but it's not the full amount. Then, since we don't have any real ingredients put in here, or I don't want them, I could put some like chopped up salami or something. But I don't really have great fried rice ingredients. So I'm just going to put a little bit of these dried onions here. Just a lot of, a dash of flavor. Some of you may be familiar with flavor. I've encountered it before and agreed that it adds a certain joie de vivre to your food. This is garlic powder. I'm going to put that on there. Also, same reason, for flavor. Okay, now, the mixing up of the rice. In this part of your cooking experience, what you're going to want to do is, with, after that initial soy sauce pudding, right, you want to mix it up a bit so that the brown from the soy sauce gets around kind of evenly. This is obviously not nearly brown enough, so we're going to need more soy sauce. We're going to need a bigger soy sauce. Here we go. Give it a little squirty, squirty, squirt. A little porgy, porgy, pour. That should be enough for that. Now we're cooking this Frisco. Or soy sauce. There we go. Yep, looking good. So just swish that all around. Just swish it, swash it, swish it, and swatch it. Just like this. Just a little bit of the old flip, flip that he flips. Now, sure, it's looking a lot better than it was before. But if you're saying, Eric, is that really soy sauce enough? You've got good eyes, friend. In fact, you're right. It's not soy sauce enough. It's still not brown enough. We're going to let it cook a bit, but we're also now going to give it the old biggity bia. Alright, with a bit of the biggity bia, then we got a little bit more to make it just the right amount of brown here. Now we're going to give it the old squishy squash, the old squishy squash, the turning the turn, the flippy tip, and all other manner of stirring mechanisms to accomplish the spreading around of the soy sauce so that it's evenly distributed over each piece of rice. 
You want every single piece of rice to have exactly the same amount of soy sauce on it. You might not achieve this goal. I'm just letting you know, that's the gold standard. I'm not sure if anybody ever achieves that, that level of perfection. But if you could, then you would have perfectly soy sauce to your rice. Mm. Yeah, you to do so. Be content with your best effort towards in that direction. You know, still seems a little under brown. I, I must say, it's just like we. Oh, Eric, you idiot! Worcestershire sauce. Where's the new soy sauce? Well, fuck. Where did I put the new, new soy sauce? What's wrong with this soy sauce? Why isn't it getting brown? I put so much of it on it. <laughs> it wasn't soy sauce, you dumbass. Oh, that's all right. I can save this. It's not ruined. It's going to be a little more Worcestershire than one might want your fried rice to be, right? Now, now we're going to get actual fried rice with soy sauce. Now it smells proper. <laughs> it's like, how did I fail to notice that I was not smelling that soy sauce kind of fried rice at all? So, obviously, this fried rice is too brown now. But it doesn't mean it has too much soy sauce on it. It just means that it's got too much Worcestershire sauce on it. And the combination of the Worcestershire sauce and the soy sauce makes it appear overly brown. But it's hopefully, the you know, Worcestershire sauce is not a very strong taste. As I, I used the Worcestershire sauce before when I ran out of soy sauce. And it wasn't a particularly strong taste. I used more of the times I thought of a soy sauce, obviously. Well, you know, everybody wants everything to be perfect all the time. You know what? Sometimes things aren't perfect. Sometimes you accidentally use Worcestershire sauce when you intend to be using soy sauce. And this is one of those times. But, as a general rule, that doesn't mean that when life gives you Worcestershire sauce, that you should make progress. Alright, well that's cooked enough, you know, how fried does it really need to be? I'm already disappointed with it already, because I haven't even, you know, I haven't even tried it. Because obviously it's not supposed to be made with a bunch of Worcestershire sauce, you know? So whatever, that's fine. I'll just eat it like this.
thanks a lot for Worcestershire sauce. Thanks for looking so much like soy sauce. Thanks for being recklessly negligent in that fashion. Alright, well, I'll take this soy sauce with me too and we'll see. Which can, you know, let's just see how horrible this is, I guess, basically. See how horrible it is. <sighs> what a dumb thing to have done. Reach in the fridge, grab a bottle of brown liquidy juice stuff, assume it's soy sauce. Ow! Oh. Eric, Eric, Eric. Will you never learn? Uh. Whoa. Same reason that you got to be present at your cat's vet appointment. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Ridiculous. Tastes so much like Worcestershire sauce. Alright, well, add a little more soy sauce and hope that It doesn't make it too saucy. Mmm. It's actually not bad. You know, rice will take anything, more or less, flavor-wise. Obviously, I wish I had not used much word for sauce on it, but it's not bad. Yes, men could be gynecologists, but I'm a little sus of any doctor, male doctor who chooses to specialize in gynecology. Warner Stevens, good day to you. Well, I don't think that men prefer female masseuse because if they're really only caring about the massage, male masseuses are stronger and if you're anything like me, Chicks aren't strong enough to get your love, you know? Okay, well, what I want you to think about this, Natasha Godfrey Ashford. Let's imagine a comparable doctor. There's a doctor who is who's exclusively a penis doctor. And men, like women, are supposed to go in periodically for penis checkups. Now, I want to ask you this, Natasha. God free Ashford. Let's say, would you, do you want to become a penis doctor? And if so, do you expect your boyfriend to be cool with that? Well, it matters to me, right? I don't want another man poking and prodding around my woman's puss. Woman doctor, I don't mind so much. I'm going to go to bed. You going to go up there? Yep, yeah. All right, cool. I love you. I'm going to go to bed pretty soon myself. 
Fuck you. Do you know Tom Quetta? No. I mean, I wouldn't want Rachel to be a penis doctor. That would bother me if she she graduated medical school and said, I want to specialize in being a penis doctor. I'm not saying you, I'm not saying it wouldn't be unreasonable or something or not inconceivable, but I'm just saying there are plenty of other fields of doctoring you could do. Why would a man insist on being a gynecologist or a woman insist on being a penis doctor? He could be a heart surgeon, he could be, you know, a kidney specialist, it could be any number of things. Why does it got to be a bad doctor? Why does she got to be a dick doctor? Makes me wonder. That, the thing is, it's like, in the courts, okay, in the courts, judges have to avoid even the appearance of impropriety. There may not be any actual impropriety there, but if there's any kind of conflict of interest, uh, even if they're not going to be influenced by that conflict of interest at all, they need to refuse themselves. I think like I think like gynecology and penis doctor, a similar principle applies. But what if Natasha, he came home from work and you're like, hi, honey. And he's like, no, dude, I've done nothing. I've been neck deep in vagina all day. No, thank you. What about that? Huh? What about that, Natasha Godfrey Ashford? Have you thought about that? Mm -hmm. And man, you just wanted to bring those spreader things home. I suspect most men would not want their wife to be a penis doctor. I mean, but that's a perfect good cover for cheating too, Natasha. Think about it that way. Maybe would be like, like, who's that? Oh, it's Julie. Um, who is that? Oh, she's a patient. I just, uh, she wants me to do a quick gynecology house call. <laughs> she's going to be lying, so. If she sees enough penises, it, no matter how great you are, she's going to be lying at some point. A speculum. Is that what they're called? Okay. Dear God, I don't even want to think about what the equivalent would be that you experience with the penis doctor.
Well, you know, look. That's all well and good, but. I just rather my wife not look at alternatives all day. That seems reasonable. I just ate some fried rice. It wasn't, uh, it was suboptimal because I accidentally started cooking it with Worcestershire sauce instead of soy sauce. I just got the wrong sauce, you know. Uh, I didn't realize it. So I used a lot of Worcestershire sauce and kept going, why is this getting brown the color it's supposed to be getting? It's getting kind of brown, but it's supposed to be browner than this. Well, then, <laughs> the problem with that soap is you can't have it both ways. You can't have it be irreplaceable, unique, and also rankable. Grab the uh, bingo card here. Mm, actually, I normally get the other uh, the other character. Regardless, hi Sarah Muis, how are you? No, that's exactly what I don't want in my relationship, right? So, I don't want to have to uh, pass some kind of performance test, comparative performance test. Well, that would be just, you know, relationship ruining. I don't think anybody wants to have to do that. You could, Fly Guy. I recommend it. I strongly recommend to anyone considering getting typed by me, do not do that. Instead, get typed by Isaiah. He's cheaper, I'm sure he's just as good, and I don't like to do it, so. I, mean, I don't hate it, but I don't want to do it really. And I'm always like, oh, whenever I get PayPal, I'm thinking about ending it actually. The same. You know what I mean? Yeah, it sounds horrible, right, Rachel? <laughs> that crazy notion of having to uh, compete somehow live up to some standard. What do you gain from being typed? It depends on who you are and what your what your level of interest in in typing is and stuff like that. I have zero interest in selling selling it as a thing. I do know that lots of people who got typed by me indicated that they found it a significant experience for a variety of different reasons. But uh, most of those people that expressed that probably had some, some uncertainty about their type that was causing them some kind of difficulty, like you know, made them feel uncomfortable or whatever. Your pookie hi bye the boss, guys, guys. Hey, but uh, I'm about to do it right this night. You caught me in the act, Michael Patrick Bernier.
basically pirated reality shows and then documentaries. We are just harvested welfare check provision. Are we? I don't know. Speak for yourself, man. Maybe you are just that, but I don't feel like I'm just that. <coughs> I mean, speak for yourself, Boba Fett. It's your call, not mine. I have a sensible, a sensible life with sensible experiences. Don't listen to Boba Fett. He's talking out of his ass. There's no such hierarchy. I said, don't listen to him. Free hearts and kidneys if you join my Jehovah's Witness Protection Program. I like Jehovah's Witness Protection Program. Jehovah's Witness Protection sounds like an answer to that game show that used to have quite like a uh, Horse race relations, you know, like that. I suggest it cool. I like them. Don't listen to Fly Guy either. All that stuff is just nonsense, nonsense, nonsense. Harley and Georgia, you're back. I'm glad you're back. I'm happy to see you. I hope you enjoy every moment of your life. Yeah, I think I'm going to make a lot of money off of piping hot piñatas. Pepe's piping hot piñatas, keep in mind. In case you're uh, sure, there's no actual Pepe, but the buying public doesn't need to know that. Get, get Isaiah to type you. Get Isaiah to type you, get Ruben to type you. Yeah, I don't need me to type you. Probably better off with somebody like Isaiah who's currently got a lot of enthusiasm for it. I mean, all right, I'm not going to lie. He'd be better off with me because I'm way more experienced. But Isaiah seems to know what he's doing just fine. And Sometimes my experience serves me not at all. I just kind of like, duh, what type are you? When it should be kind of obvious. Sometimes that happens, so who knows. Regardless, yes, I'm very good at typing people, but if your goal is to get the correct type, there are other people who can do it. And, uh, me get meow. Nathan Rogers says, young boys beware. Are you planning to do something to young boys, Nathan Rogers? Seems like the, the sort of thing I might need to time you out. Wow. That was uh, some serious uh, some serious action taken. <laughs> yes, the beer has no alcohol. For God's sakes. Arthur Morgan. I don't know who Arthur Morgan is. The thing is, James Walsh, I'm obviously the single most sober person in history. Except for the drugs. Anybody would think I'm drunk is not good at distinguishing between different drugs effects. I'm not displaying any qualities of being drunk at all. You might say that I could articulate more clearly, but that's probably linking to my lack of teeth rather than anything else. Uh, you could say that I'm showing some signs of mild intoxication, but that's mostly just being tired and lots of bong reps. 
Well, kind of mild intoxication, but not really. Well, James Walsh, that's wonderful. I'm glad you're joking. The thing is about jokes, one of the wonderful things about it is that sometimes they afford me the opportunity to treat them at face value, address such notions directly. This kind of reinforce the truth. It's not necessarily a bad thing for you to have prompted that. <laughs> What about Jeffrey Epstein? I don't believe he killed himself. That's what you're saying. I think he was probably murdered. And, uh, I think that's super sus. I would like to know what's going on there. If they could do an investigation and figure that out. I doubt that'll happen. Makes you think rich and powerful people and get away with certain things, obviously. I think I don't have enough money. And that makes it evil. I think not having enough money might be evil. Uh, what am I smoking? Marijuana. You know, you're addicted to Dutch ovens. Might as well face it, you're addicted to drugs. The lights are on, but no one's home. Your kiss is not your own. You know why? Because you might as well face it, you're addicted to drugs. You thought it was crack. No, I'm just smoking weed. You looks like a crack kid. Well, thanks, Max Musterman. I assume you mean a super handsome crackhead, right? Like the kind of crackhead that leads the field at Crackhead University. The kind of crackhead that walks down the runways of Fashion Paris Week, representing crackheads everywhere, bringing crackhead chic to the Parisian elite. That kind of crackhead, maybe. You're off weed. Okay, cool. Well, sometimes I don't smoke weed, too. I'm from Germany, motherfucker. We hate America, these warlords. Wow, Max. Aren't you full of vim and vigor tonight? Strong opinions about things. Yeah, you know... Certainly, America is subject to uh, plenty of justifiable critique. But, you know, at least we aren't bailing out Greece for their economic failures. Uh, how about holding people culpable, maybe? Instead of trying to hold together the EU with your German banking superiority? Gaw. Can you help, guys, help me to ban Vamp Jenny? They live now and I... No, Frog Lord. No. No, Frog Lord. If you want to ban them, fine. This is not a place where we go police other YouTube channels, okay? So, knock it off. I don't care how much it sucks. You guys, anyone who individually wants to go do whatever, do it, fine. But this is not an endorsed practice of... It is not at my... It is not at my advisement, nor urging, okay? I don't want to concern myself with playing YouTube police. <laughs> It's just nodders. So what? Let him nod out on heroin. What's the big deal? 
Who would? Why, why would you live stream yourself nodding out on heroin? It seems extremely dull. No good entertainment value in being on heroin. It's odd AF. Odd AF. Max Musterman says, Yeah, you American junkie. Well, Max Musterman, I'm certainly not a junkie at all. Just smoking some weed. But uh, I guess you are being willfully provocative because you're trying to elicit a response, I guess. Yeah, it's clear you're trying to express a determined critique. Uh, unfortunately, you're not going to provoke much of a response from me. Simplistic, uh, ill-considered, poorly articulated, rage, st rage sentences, they don't impress me, and uh, not much I can do in response to it or take it seriously, you know. The lamp is talking, what's it saying to you? I mean, the blowtorch, you might say, is, uh, severe for weed. But what I would say is, there are advantages to using the strongest fire you can to pull a bong ring. First of all, this bong, it clogs easy. So the torch helps it to clog less. Second of all, while I do have somewhere a lighter, a uh, regular lighter. Uh, this is a lighter I never put in my pocket and walk away with, so it's always right here, ready to go. If I had tried to use some other flame, I would have had to look for my lighter, which I don't know where I put it. Probably it's in the uh, my jacket. Do I inhale more gas that way? Uh, what I would say is, I don't think I inhale propane. You know, propane is clean burning gas. Cool soap. Nice having you here. See you later. Do you believe weed is God-given and not a drug in the eyes of God? I have no opinion about what God's opinion about weed is. I mean, I think one's behaviors become wicked or not predicated on on either wronging others or if it's a behavior of your own that's getting out of hand and it's predicated on on how much it's an expression of your free will and how much it's an expression of your free will run amok you know you use blowtorch to cook you make a lot of uh Creme brulee. I know. Ah, there it is. Yeah, I grow my sugar on my creme brulee. I knew that's one thing that you use a blowtorch for. I like creme brulee. Creme brulee is delicious. Hi, guys. Remember, every one of you can make a change happen. The satanic people don't belong anywhere because they have no morals and will hurt people. Okay, well, here's the thing, Frog Lord. Unless they're actually doing any harm to anybody... You can articulate something specific that's um, that's predatory, exploitative, or whatever that's going on. Then you don't get to determine whether or not your position on their morals means they're going to hurt people. If you can't articulate specific ways in which they're hurting somebody, wronging somebody, then it's wrong of you to try to crush them under your your you know sanctimonious boot be very careful with this urge of yours frog lord it's probably both unjustified and ill-advised in almost every circumstance 
Sharp rocks are God-given. They're not weapons in the eyes of God, officer. Well, you got a good point there. Sharp rocks are weapons in the eyes of God, says James Walsh. He's going to disagree with Fly Guy's claim there. Uh, what about doll rocks? We are manipulated by ETs. What do the ETs, what, who, are they manipulating me? If so, how are they manipulating me? And are they gaslighting me? Hmm. We proved it with Mary Magdalene. I tell you what else are weapons in the eyes of God? Bears. Bears. The mauling of people by bears is an appropriate punishment, godly, etc., provided the wrongdoers have jeered you about your baldness. Replace sharp rock with Datura and weapon with drug. Datura is God given. It is not a drug in the eyes of God, officer. Well, because it's it's a poison, not a drug. Yes, even God is E.T. God is E.T., huh? So, but how is he manipulating me? Or how is E.T. manipulating me? Are they manipulating me specifically? Or are they manipulating other specific people? Or are they somehow manipulating everybody at once? Yes, they're manipulating me specifically. How are they doing it? No, they're not manipulating me specifically. Okay. Uh, I don't know. You'll need to say more than yes or no. You need to explain what your position here is. Like, yes, they are manipulating you specifically, Eric. Or, not you, but specific other people or yes you and everyone else those are really your three possibilities my life is all fucked yeah 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 it's all fuck a fucked yeah 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 it's a fuck a fuck a fucked yeah 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 cause my life is fucked yeah 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 um irrelevance you're talking about like a question about about uh, about who exactly is being manipulated. The whole earth is being manipulated. Is everybody being equally manipulated, or are some people more manipulated than others? I'm getting super tired. I'm not very good, but I want to go smoke a cigarette first. And then uh, possibly just maybe take you guys into bed with me and tell you a quick bedtime story before going to sleep. I thought this stream was a sting op. ATF. I don't know what ATF is. Alcohol, tobacco, and firearms? <laughs> this is just me streaming. So I've been doing these kind of things for ages, just dreaming, chatting. She's just a woman. Alimony, alimony, paying your bills. Yeah, so Muhammad says, squiggle squigs, a squiggly squigs. And now I'm going to spam my squiggly squigs. Nobody can read your squiggly squigs. Don't please spam your squiggly squigs. All right, squiggles. Off you go. Nobody can read your squiggly squigs. So just don't, certainly don't spam them. You say it once, fine, but it's probably just some dumb in shit anyway. Like, 
Everybody comes in, his name's like Yalar, Karlar, Akbar, Muhammad, whatever. Um, everybody's like that. Seems like they all want to talk about Islam stuff. Like, shut up about it already. Nobody cares. No, I don't jerk off too much. I'm the vast majority of the time. I'm not exactly sure what percentage, but 90 probably percent of the time I ejaculate. It's uh, having sex with Rachel. I'm not jerking off. Sometimes if I'm up in the middle of the night, she's asleep, like right now, but except not right now. Uh, but if I were in a different mood or whatever, sometimes I'd just be like, I don't want to wait. I'm just going to rub one out before bed or whatever. But that's not the case right now. What is this? I don't like it. It's a wasp. That's why I don't like it. Well, Mr. Wasp, you are bad, okay? Let me be clear about this. You are bad. The reason you're bad, because of your capacity to sting me, causing me pain, injury, and sorrow. You should be outside, or not anywhere near my house in general, because you are bad. Waspy Joe, you need to go in the trash. Where you can safely die. Locking the door, locking the door, making sure it's locked some more. If you don't want to lock the door, then you could be in trouble. Oops. All right. Add a little more water to this. It won't dry out too much. Just put the old leaking out on it as per now. All right, good. Now, I believe we were on our way to having a health tea. Let's go. We got our coffee. That's right. We got our coffee. We've got our cigarette. We've got our jacket here. This time we're going to go to the garage. We've also got... Uh, Okay, bend over. That doesn't mean, you know, just because you don't like Islam doesn't mean you need to be all exaggerated about things. I believe it was a nine-year-old, right? Not a six-year-old. So just move that comment. Not that a nine-year-old better, but don't be inaccurate. Wise words, unfuck yourself. Okay, well, I think wise words are like yourself. You know, love yourself like yourself. Depending on who you are, you may find it more difficult to like yourself than to love yourself. I believe I'm in that boat. So, well, you know, and the reason I think is basically because I am I'm my 
like full function is objective deliberation. It means I'm kind of relentlessly self critical and objectively self critical compared against an ideal, usually instead of the alternative. You know, that's not necessarily being objectively fair to myself. So, in that regard, it's easy for me to love myself, but it's for me to like myself because I spend too much time thinking about how I fail and how I should I shouldn't fail <laughs> you know like that how I fail and how I shouldn't fail but I'm getting easier on myself I'm learning Learning to like myself, or just at least, maybe I'm not even learning. Maybe it's just kind of, uh, easy existence, a stress-free life, plenty of positive regard from people on the internet, people saying nice things. It, um... You know, frees up a person to be in a, a more optimal version of themselves. I really think that circumstances have a lot to do with that. It's like everyone wants to talk about, uh, how, uh, you know, you just have the right attitude or rah, rah, rah. Uh, I don't buy that. It's like frequently circumstances dictate the vast majority of reality and Things you can impact directly comprise a smaller amount of reality. If the problems at the frame level, people telling you, well, you could do something at the case level, is missing the point and insulting and terrible. In other words, if the problem is you hate your job, the least helpful thing imaginable is, well, you just need to try some tricks to help make your job more fun. No. <laughs> I need a different job, right? You don't try to put ribbons on something you hate. You try to eliminate it from your life. And the fact that you despise your job is not going to be fixed by a change of attitude. You hate your job, so after all, your attitude should be pretty poor. You should think, this sucks ass. I don't like this. And that's the only sane and honest kind of attitude response to a horrible reality is, this sucks ass. I don't like this. I'm going to complain. <laughs> I don't have a good attitude about this because it sucks. That's just called sanity. You can't just, oh, I'm going to have a good attitude anyway. I know we're all enslaved now, but let's make the best of it. No, fucktard. Obviously, being cheerful in the face of atrocity is not a virtue. So, you know, I don't believe in circumstances. Circumstances making the man as much as man making the circumstances. So many incidental things happen. It's dangerous to credit too much of anything to your own, your own will, genius, or whatever else. Well, I'm not a determinist, I'm also a I might say a humblest, like 
I have too many experiences of pride cometh before the fall. It happens to me, it's happened to me so many times in life. I start getting cocky about something and bam, I lose. That's just how life goes, how reality is. It might be generous to you, it might be kind, you might be lucky, you might think it might be going well. As soon as you start thinking, you can count on that or you're entitled to it. it the rug gets ripped right out from under you. It's probably a bad idea not only to not count your chickens, but it's probably a good idea not only to not count your chickens before you're, you're hatched, but also to not count them after they're hatched not count them at all until they're all dead. Then you can count how many chickens you had. That I think is a good approach to chicken counting. If people were looking for advice on chicken counting, that's my advice. Oh sure. I know, unsolicited advice is always a questionable tactic. Uh, more likely to give it than I am to appreciate it roughly, unfortunately. A little bit of hypocrisy there on my part, perhaps. But you know, each of us deep inside, we have six ounces of sin. At least, sometimes a lot more, but a minimum of six ounces. Not anybody except Jesus who has fewer than six ounces of sin. Keep that in mind. Next time you try to get too hard on yourself for your various failures, you, you have to have at least six ounces. Maybe it's just part of that six ounces. And just be like, well, it gets me. It helps fill my quota. <laughs> I'm not sure if that's really a properly moralist approach to the issue, but you know what I'm saying. Silver linings, lemonade, all that. Okay, so you might be pleased to know that even though you're in the bathroom with me, you do not have to watch me go to the bathroom. And simple girl, you just put away your nurse hat if you're still here, all right? I don't want you listening to any of my biological processes with your medical ears. You just listen with your regular ears. If there's something wrong with me, I don't want to know about it. I'm of the rather definitively irrational school of thought that says what you don't know can't hurt you, but only physically. What I don't know informationally can hurt me, but not about physicalities. About my own physicality. In other words, I don't want to know I'm sick, basically. If I am sick. If I'm sick with something bad. We're gonna die of something bad. I wanna pretend there's nothing wrong with me until like the last minute and then all of a sudden I'm dead. <sighs> right. Right. Oh meow. What a handsome boy. What a good kitty. You remind me of my friend, Trouble. And that's because you are he. Don't give me that big eyed look. It says, I kind of want to attack you. I don't want to spend my whole life watching you eat.
Or would you just learn to eat by yourself? You're a full grown cat. You've eaten myriad meals by yourself over the course of your life. Countless. And one could count them, but one would have to count them pretty high. But now, all of a sudden, you have this disability. Prevents you from eating unless observed specifically by me. You're not satisfied with Rachel watching you. You don't want Rachel to watch you. And you're only semi satisfied unless I'm standing right next to the table. It's asking an awful lot of me just to get you to engage in a basic biological process of consuming food. <laughs> you need to do to live and to satiate your hunger it's, it's not, neither of which is conditional upon me watching you in any mean in any objective calculus of the question yet you insist time and again on not eating unless I'm watching You have some kind of mental illness. Yeah, I know you want me to watch you eat. But what's up with that? Like... Okay. Is it a mental illness like schizophrenia? Do you have a personality disorder? Why must I watch you eat? I don't want to watch you eat. <sighs> well, the phone's about to die, everybody. So, it's a good time as any to wrap it up before the phone dies. Thanks, everybody, for being here. I love you all. See you later. Don't forget to eat plenty of cheese.